Well, good morning, everybody. I'd like to declare annual plan long term plan meeting AT, AP LTP 23 bar 4 open and welcome you all here, councillors, staff, and visitors to the chambers. This meeting is being live streamed and has Zoom available. I'll start uh, with the karakia. Fokato mai te warua, fokafatia mai te hini naro, fokariti mai te tinana, kia e ai na me mahi, ai. I'm not sure whether he's present now, but uh, or not. But Warren Clark, Director of Utility New Zealand, will be on uh, via Zoom to help us later on in the agenda. Do we have any apologies? I think we're all present. We have no late items. Are there any declarations of interest anyone wishes to declare? Yes, I asked for conflicts, so um, and it seems we don't have any. <clears throat> so we'll go to our public forum and our visitors in the chambers. We have first up, we have uh, Ross Gowdy, our community board chairperson. Ross. Thank you, Mr. Yes, you may indeed. <coughs> As you could say, um, in here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, out of practice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for allowing us to participate in the public forum. Good morning, councillors. Good morning, Your Worship the Mayor. Uh, good morning, staff. Um, in going through your annual plan uh, meeting agenda uh, for today, I found that there was 776,000 going to be removed from our long-term plan stormwater account on top of the 406 that got removed in February, and we were a little bit concerned. And in respect of what happened on the 29th of May, uh, we uh, want more money in that account and going forward than what it appears. Um, further to this, you'll see, 2013, and I've got, I will send you all the 2013, not some the teacup revision, uh, 1213, and the maps with all the options of what we have done. We have done quite a few things, but we haven't done a large amount of the bigger things. And we're doing Two Mile Creek, which has been going on for quite some time. And um, so these are, 2015, this is what worked out in the long-term plan after we'd gone through all these options, made a reasonable assessment of what each project would be, and we allocated them to various things. Now, some of them have had a really drastic uh, reduction. Don't quite know why in most cases, but um, um, that's the state of the play at the moment, and that's what we got to. And below that is the 2015 LTP, the 2019, 2021, and February's one where we lost the uh, um, a bit in Two Mile Creek, although it's going to be reinstated, I see, and um, the $405 for Edinburgh Street pipe upgrade disappeared totally. And then this meeting today, you'll see in yellow, um, another 
766,000 disappearing. Now, we're just very concerned that this money is disappearing. And although the project principally is still there, uh, if we wanted to do these things either urgently or in rotation, and our view is that Two Mile Creek is about to happen, thank God, um, <coughs> we really need to be doing the planning and consenting of the next project and the next project so that it carries on. Now, this is the bottom of One Mile Creek on the 29th, outside the Holiday Park. This is the water raging down One Mile Creek. This is the dam which overflowed. Now, I know it, what happened, so I'm not going to get into who did what or what have you. I'm just saying these are the effects. It came down the road. And this is where the water ended up from there going into the stream. Elderly housing. You can see the water line on there. The water actually came over the road there where the fire trucks are parked into the houses below. That's um, the big puddle that flooded them. This is downstream and you can see uh, one little house there, they get flooded all the time and the church and there's a couple of other houses. One at the back there is actually, uh, they were sensible, they put their house up two meters. This is what happened in the drain below the elderly houses. This is Marine Avenue, uh, no, Marine Avenue, Walnut Avenue with the area, underwater again. This is Marine Avenue, the lake in front of the church. Browns Drive with a car park that didn't get through. This is the river going across the main road going down into what is effectively going down the back of that, going down to Palm Grove, where half the water actually goes down, goes through Palm Grove, down the out there road, Hillview Road, and into the Waterlands Block, Kimata Block. I'm not going to go into um, who, how, why, and what, and we're, as a community board, totally focused on going forward and trying to fix these, and some things can be fixed straight away and others. So we would like to have some money in our accounts, stormwater accounts, to achieve that. I also will send you the 2013 Community Board Report, which summarised all the not stormwater teacup with all the options, and you'll also get, although I can't get it through the server here at the moment, the options, the digital file of the options and the maps. So you'll get a good plan there. I invite you all to the afternoon, on Monday afternoon. I hope that the council has many answers to the residents, otherwise you'll be skinned alive or my community board will descend into a ruckus. So um, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Any questions? Council Sol. Um, first of all, a comment. Thank you for not really running after recrimination and so on. It's about moving forward. And I think you made a good point of that today. And it's really, really important and, and clear. Um, I guess the other part to this is, have you any idea how many people so far have been displaced because of this? Um, we know what the elderly houses have been in this place. I gather there's nine. There's three or four others, but there may well be, with batches and what have you, double that amount. And every so often we get somebody that puts their hand up and say, um, I've been flooded. I didn't know I was flooded because it's a batch, but some are flooded again. And yes, I free, yeah, I recognise that it was a very sudden event. Well, we know about that. And sometimes the house flooding has been extraordinary, particularly in Walnut and 
beach road and around that area. So um, yeah, could be 25 to 30 that have been badly affected. And they are looking to the council for answers. Some of them are getting very, very grumpy, but, and that's why I hope that we can have a decent answer, question answer session on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I, I think it'd be helpful if we remember that, that Monday is more of an opportunity to talk about this recent flood event and, yeah. and, and wider events. This is yeah. particularly, Ross is here to talk about the impacts in terms of his view of the, um, his reading of the annual plan and, and the, the monies that seem to have been moved around. So Rodney, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how you're gonna handle this, John, but um, we're obviously looking for answers. Um, so is there someone on the staff team who can actually explain at some point, and whether it's now is appropriate or later, yeah. um, where, where the money has gone? And is it still sitting there? Is it a timing issue? Because um, as Ross points out, it's been going for a decade. Yeah, I, I was going to ask um, Mr. Ellis if he was able to make a brief comment, but rem remember, we can't sort all this out here this morning. This isn't the, the purpose of that. Um, and, and so you're quite right, as long as I've been a councillor, the stormwater in Waihee Beach has been an issue and there has been desire to address some of those issues. And it's been a real challenge um, getting some of the projects put in place to address those. But just briefly in terms of the funding, could you just give some brief comments for now, Gary? I'm, I'm in a, there's a bigger issue. I'm, I'm sure Monday and other forums are a better place to discuss that in more detail. But if you could just have some brief comments now. Yeah, please. sure. Um, so essentially the funding is still there. The funding gets shifted around based on the ability to achieve the projects uh, with the resources we got in the consenting. And so the projects that have been set in the long-term plan stay there unless the council decides something differently. Um, but we do, um, each long-term plan and annual plan times, we do shift projects forwards and backwards, um, depending on what we're going to achieve. So did you have a follow-up? Yeah. Um, so Ross has shown us money keeps moving backwards rather than, they're not seeing a lot moving forwards. So what are the reasons for this year's moving around? I mean, is it resource consents or is it, you know, what, what are the issues that are behind the latest delays? Uh, so in terms of, if we take Two Mile Creek as an example, the funding on that had shifted over a number of years for several reasons. Firstly, the consented design became unaffordable. So we were talking um, seven to nine million to do the works based on the consented design. So we then did a redesign to reconsent, which required then required property owner approval. So that was again why timing shifted. That project now comes in about two and a half million which then frees up other funds from what the council had allocated. Um, so the reason if we go to Mile Creek, it was that history of events means we're now in a position to do it. But um, if we'd done it previously, the council couldn't afford to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that better probably for another occasion, but um, Council Murray Benge. Thank you. Ross, through are you, Mr. Chairman, um, when council decided that we would remove the cost of the resource consent if people wanted to lift their badges, and you mentioned one was quite safe, amongst all that dreadful flooding, were any others that had been lifted saved? All the lifted ones were saved. I'll make it quite plain. They were. But some uh, don't, haven't done it, even knowing that that is a floodplain and a pond and their lives be flooded. There was some um, selling of them because they were uh, 10, 12 years ago when we had a bad flood. Uh, they sold them to a new unsuspecting um, buyer who took the risk and didn't upgrade them. It's about $200,000, I believe, to uh, raise a house by two metres. Uh, and don't have any living accommodation in the bottom. Uh, your car might get um, drowned, but uh, um, you don't get drowned. Um, it adds $400,000 to the uh, the value of the property. Yep. So um, 
there is a quick but I'm not looking, I'm not wanting to go through those yeah. sort of things um, yeah. at, at this stage. That's not what we're about. Yeah. Thank you for that, Ross. I think we need to call that one uh, to a halt here for this morning, but uh, appreciate that the wider discussions need to take place. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Kim. So now, Heather, did you have another item you wish to yes. present on in the forum? So thank you. If we could go to you now, please. So I'm Heather Guptill, I'm a community board member for Waihe Beach also, and I'm here today to talk to you about the elderly housing on behalf of Waihe Beach community. So as you saw with um, Ross's photos, it was very badly hit with these floods and that's not the first time. Um, so while Waihe Beach is a great place to live and it's becoming more popular every year with permanent residents, the council itself predicts that there will be an increased demand for out of housing in the future and will need increasing in supplying being very limited. So at Waihe Beach we're lucky enough to have those 19 rental units for the elderly which both the land and the buildings were gifted by two local families to the community and are now under the council umbrella. These units are all single level with the complex having two road frontages. The complex assists the council to meet the health, social and community needs of the elder people in our community. So a number of these units are prone to flooding, so, uh, or at least have water reaching the outside of the unit in a normal rain event, making the tenants feel concerned for their safety in times of heavy rain. And this is caused by an issue with the nearby stormwater drains and some of the units which are low lying. You'll all be aware of that Waihe Beach has been hit pretty hard this year, alone with weather events, the rain, the wind, flooding, tornadoes and so on. And the most recent being that couple of weeks ago, which has left people homeless and losing everything. So the hardest hit, of course, was our council elderly housing, with these vulnerable people having to literally wade through water, floodwaters to safety. Thank goodness the rain came during the day and not at night, or we would have had fatalities, that's for sure. This is just another hard pill for these people to swallow after the constant security and safety issues where tenants are often having people entering the property, constantly knocking on the windows and walls at all hours of the night and sometimes day, harassing and scaring the tenants and constant vandalism of their cars, which includes window screen wipers damaged and ripped from their cars, along with door handles. And one lady's car was written off after a car drove straight into it. As a community, we see the benefit in encouraging the elderly to stay within our community and having them continue and to contribute and be proactive within our special place. They are the people with the knowledge experience and expertise who can be part of volunteer organisations within our community and that are working to make Waihe Beach a better and more inclusive place to live, work and play. And they deserve a warm, safe and affordable place to live out their days. So, John, I'm sure that you have some photos of your handsome young self that you cannot replace. And Margaret, I'm sure that you have some trinkets or family heirlooms that are irreplaceable. And John, I'm sure that you have a comfy chair, you relax in at the end of a long day that you would truly miss. And James, I'm sure that you have treasures that you've gathered from your children and family that you could not replace. In the recent floods, our elderly and the council units lost everything their comfy chairs, their family heirlooms, including diamond rings, and photos, getting out of their units only in the clothes that they were standing in, most without shoes even. And James, you were there and you saw them and you talked to them. They've told me how they've spoken to you. Um, we cannot let this happen to these people or others, and they've been displaced and are all in temporary accommodation and feeling real anxiety and concerned about where to from here. So the meeting we had with these people that left me devastated on Sunday, that we as a council have not dealt with the liability and mitigated future risk after the last big flood 10 years ago. These people have paid their rent on the understanding that their landlord, and that's you, would ensure that they have a safe, warm place to live. 
First off, the drain needs to be maintained and the money spent on it to minimise the risk for this happening again in the future, not just for our elderly housing, but the other residents nearby who are also homeless. We have bad weather coming again this weekend. Here's hoping, hoping that doesn't happen to flood again. So what are we going to do about the council's units? And this is something that I'd really like you to think about as you look at your annual plan. We've been told that it may take up to 12 months to get a quick renovation and repair. But should we do a quick repair and can we ensure that tenants will have accommodation until such time as this work is complete? There are many community members who have spoken to us and maybe yourselves about the situation. There are options available. Of course, the first one is that what I've just talked about is a quick patch and repair and then wait till the next time it happens and we'll do it all over again and it'll cost more money. Or we could use the council land, bring in nice relocatable one bedroom homes and get these people settled until such time as we have a proper lift and renovate of the current homes. Our community members think we could get some grants and other assistance to make this option work. We would need nine or 10 units at a budget of around 175,000 each, including basic furniture, which has been lost by these people. Um, and that's a total, of course, quick mass of about 1,750,000. Once the original units are renovated, these re relocatable ones could be either sold or used for future elderly housing that we may well need. The ideal place for this is across the road at the Waihi Beach Road Reserve, which is designated as a residential and recreation, recreational. Members of our community are willing to form a committee to make this happen, and I would love to hear this. There is another option that members of our community have come up with, including one of the original landowners' families. A trust would be set up under the umbrella of the Waihi Beach RSA. They would take over the running of the units and with the insurance money and other donations, repair, raise and modernise the units to make them safe and healthier. This, of course, would mean finding long-term accommodation possibly, as mentioned before with the, um, bringing in the, um, the units, for residents until such time as the units are in a comfortable state to move back into. We've been told that would take probably about two years. We have options but this is urgent and I'd like the opportunity to discuss this further with you, staff and other community members in the near future. I'll send you all a copy of this presentation later and would love to get your feedback on it. Um, there is a real groundswell of discontent as Ross alluded to before at Waihi Beach at the moment and getting some resolution to this would at least um, show our people that they've been heard. So do you have any questions? Yeah. Tracy. Just, yeah, just a moment. And I just say first, thank you for your efforts to care for these people in their hour of need. I will take a question or two, but we don't really have time nor the delegations to deal with this matter in this committee. Okay. But I'm sure, as you've said, we can take up your offer of uh, your offer to assist and discuss that in other forums. Okay, it's it's more in, including that in your annual plan. You're going that's going to be a cost that's going to be. Thank you, so Tracy. Council yeah, yeah, just clarification. So, with the RSA, are they proposing to purchase the site or just manage the site? And I'm not sure how. So, uh, the, yeah. this was the land was gifted by two families. And one of those families built the units of their own cost, and then they gifted that to the council. So it comes under the council umbrella at the moment. One of the um, members of that family is a member of the RSA, and he is willing to, with along with a, um, they're going to put it in a trust as their proposal and they would run it, just take it back over again and run it um, under the RSA umbrella rather than the council umbrella. With the ownership still with the council? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand the technical. No, the ownership no. wouldn't be with the council. With the trust, okay. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Joyce. Sorry, repeating, asking staff, I mean, what is the current state of play 
with looking after these people who are our tenants and what how are they being accommodated until all these units are repaired and what is the process to be gone through from the council side on the future of these um, these accommodation because um, Heather's offer you know, could, could, could be a good one, but have to obviously you know, go through it as you say, um, but it would be good to know what's being done now. Um, and also from a financial point of view, since we're on an annual plan meeting, what is the insurance situation? I'm not sure whether we're a position to answer those questions. I'm not sure who to look at. Um, I, 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 can't answer, I can't answer all those questions at the moment. I can answer the question in terms of the insurance. So the insurance is covered with a $25,000 excess. In terms of the units, we are getting the pricing for the to repair them, to put them back into, into occupation. Um, we're also investigating, I just go, this is just an investigation of whether they can be lifted. Um, they are on a concrete slab, so it's not as easy as a timber floor, obviously. Uh, and once we've got that information, the intention was to come back to the council to go, what do you want to do? Because it poses exactly those questions that have been raised here today, is going, what are the future on that site? Um, are there other works that could be done that would reduce the risk of flooding? But I think for those lower units, you can probably never eliminate it. Uh, so there's, there's, there's still a council process to go through before we actually make any of those decisions. Okay, one quick follow-up if I can, and I realise now is not the perfect time, but can we please get a report to councillors on what's happening for these people now? Because all, all that takes time, right? And we need to know what's happening for these people now to make sure they're being looked after, and we need some confidence around the council table that these people are being looked after. Thank you. Final question, Councillor Sol. Um, thank you, sir. Basically, um, how confident are you in the in the organisation or potential people to um, um, look after these units, etc.? I mean, you've offered to be perhaps one of the leading people in this. Um, are you confident that you have people with the right type of uh, skills to uh, be able to manage and look after these people in the future if, if they moved out of council hands? Oh, certainly. Uh, there's um, a welfare um, set up already that have been looking after these people already um, and giving them, finding them accommodation along with the council staff and in helping them find um, money to be able to buy shoes even and, and clothes and things like that. They, they walked out with nothing. You, you will have seen on the TV that the water was so strong that a fridge was even knocked over and, and so they just had, had to get out or, um, that, you know, that, that could, could have been dire. Yeah. Thank you. All right brings our public forum to a conclusion. So thank you, Ross and Heather, for travelling all this distance and sharing those um, matters with us. Thank you. All right. If we could uh, move on with our meeting then, please. We have no presentations, so we're now into our reports. And uh, first matter up is uh, the annual plan 2023-24 schedule of fees and charges and deliberations. So, um, Rebecca's coming forward now. Oh, sorry, Mr. Thwaites. Thank you, sir. I did read the 882-page agenda today, and it just struck me, have we really got our act together? We start with a couple of items on halls and that. We have serious um, stormwater budget for next year to sort out. We've got number one road falling to bits, and we're starting with nickel and diming, and I really wonder what, what's really driving this council. Are we going to spend our most time on five-minute items that can be ticked off when the budget for these key items should be sorted out and put in place. So yeah. I'm really disappointed with this agenda. Okay, yeah. heard, heard you, but we're gonna work through it uh, as it's set out and uh, we'll see where we get to at the end of the day. So. 
can, can we just then, I mean, if, if today's not the day, can we have another day when we can go through those two big issues? Because number one, road is very serious, stormwater is very serious, yeah, and we need to do that. And we've got extra time to set the annual plan because we're now looking at August rather than yeah. June. So let's use that time, quite apart from the two issues that we need to deal with, to actually address these two issues as well. I'm sure staff have plans to update us at the appropriate time. I'm not quite sure. Did you wish to comment, Mr. Ellis? You're looking there. Um, I'd probably comment on number one road rather than issue the stormwater. Yeah. Um, number one road, we've got the information sheet that's been, well, not just been distributed to the councils, but has been um, supplied to a number of people um, in terms of the process we're going through. Um, the plan is to do some of the rehabilitation next year. We're just still working through the funding model, but the funding for uh, the road rehabilitation is in the existing budgets. Thank you for that. Councillor Sol. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, look, I'm afraid I'm totally in, in support of um, my fellow councillors here. We are dealing with chicken feed in many places, so to speak, when we've got serious issues. And I hope that this annual plan gets to deal with these serious issues and gets involved or put into it. So um, I hope this doesn't close it off today, um, that we can actually, due to circumstances, make other arrangements. Well, we have to be flexible as we go forward. And you've heard um, Mr. Ellis's explanation that there are substantial sums and budgets to address some of these issues as we move through the year. So I think we need to move on to the reports. So um, Becca and Matt, we have you there. Do you wish to provide an introduction before we commence? Uh, just briefly, sorry, apologies for the voice. Um, the report you have in front of you is in response to the consultation that took place between the 30th of March and 30th of April. So there are 17 issues and options papers that have come as a result of that consultation or new information arising. So we have, you've got those 17 issues and options papers for your direction um, that's required today for us to be able to finalise the annual plan. They may seem a bit rats and mice, but they are in response to issues that have been raised by our community. Um, so I've tried to put them in a, an order in which uh, so each general manager can speak to their group of them as opposed to having to jump up and down um, in response uh, to them. Um, as you know, we have proposing to um, delay the adoption due to the um, secondary paper that you've got, as well as we are still waiting on the revaluation process, um, which is hopefully uh, next week is the um, public notification date. Um, so on that, um, we'll move to the first issues and options paper, which you'll find at page 15 of the agenda, which is... Oh, there we go. Um, perhaps before we do that, can we deal with those first three recommendations, please, Rebecca, if I could interrupt? Because um, they are really, um, I think, or I'd like to think, fairly straightforward. So do we have a mover and a seconder that we accept those first three recommendations in the agenda? Page six. It's been moved by the Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Daly. No discussion. All those in favour, please say, oh, sorry. Sorry, just a question. Are we, like, sorry, sorry. So are we saying we're accepting all of those at this point? No. No, no, no. no. Okay. We're, we're, we're just, just, just procedural just matter, and then Receive. we're going to work through the issues and options that are ahead of us and decide where we land on those. So, Councillor Murray Benge. Happy to support the recommendation, Sue, but, and I accept that staff have done a lot of work on this to get us to this point and responding to the submissions from the public. But um, I agree with the other speakers that infrastructure should be a priority for this council because there's been so much damage done from one end of the district to the other. And uh, it may come over the top 
of all that we have done, but we've got to come to grips with that. And so I'm pleased that we're going to have a further report and we've got time to actually um, settle all of it before we come to a final decision. Okay, thank you, Councillor Joyce. Just going back to something that was said before by staff, um, that information has been prepared and given to people. Can we ask that whenever something goes out to residents like that, that it comes to the councillors too, as a matter of course, because we're the ones that get the questions. And yet, I mean, I've only been here a few months, but I keep hearing about, oh yeah, we've given this to the people on number four road, and we've given this to the people that are concerned about number one road, but we don't get that information. And so, you know, there's, there's gaps in the information flow. Um, and anything that goes out to residents, yeah, beyond a sort of one-on-one -on -one letter or something, but anything organised should naturally come to councillors. And I can't understand why that doesn't happen as a matter of course. I, I'm sure there have been, I know there have been moves in the past to see that that does happen. There are occasions when um, things are shared with ward councillors, but not necessarily the whole council. So we can certainly take that up and uh, uh, seek to address that, that inf as you say, information is shared with all. So, got another speaker here, Councillor Wickers. I'd just like to uh, congratulate the staff of having to wade through this truckload of information and put it in a form that at least we can deal with it, even though it's 100, 880 pages. So just well done. Thank you. All right, I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Okay, so we will move then to the first of the issues before us, which is the Tipoki Memorial Hall. So did you have anything further to say, Rebecca? No. Okay. So you've got the options before you there. Well, they're up on the screen there. And you can find it at page 15 of the agenda. Councillor Joyce. So it's a broad question. So forgive me, but I thought I'd take the opportunity. With these community halls, do we own them all? Or in this case, do we not own it? Um, you know, presumably these loans, will, as you say, will be repaid from the hall committee and through um, people using the hall. But how do we manage things like conflicts of interest, ensuring that any contracts are let, you know, that meet the standards of, of um, you know, Audit New Zealand and, and things like that. How do we make sure that these halls all run completely above board in terms of you know committee members not suddenly doing work you know and with conflicts of interest and things you know over all the halls, not just this one. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I'm thinking that we're starting to get into projects in monitoring territory here, and and whilst that's a valid question to ask at an appropriate time. I don't think this, you know, if we start asking these questions, we're going to be here all through the night. So yep. um, if that is a set of assistance to you. Happy to move it to that, but I'd like the question answered. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just say in response to that, that I'm not sure who it is now, it used to be Blaise Williams was dedicated, that was part of his role, was to manage and interact with the halls and see that all those um, issues were met. You want to add briefly, Mr. Oh, that's correct. Kerry Little does that now yeah, with her team. Right. Sorry, Kerry Little does that now with her team. Um, and for the bigger contracts, we get involved in those. So, for example, the re-roofing of the hall, we will be involved in that because we're re-roofing our office next door at the same time. So potentially a single contract. So sometimes we run those contracts rather than the hall committee. Councillor Granger. Thank you, sir. As this, um, option one has no impact on the rates for the area, I am happy to move option one. Thank you. We have a second. A second, Councillor Wickers. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Mary Bean? Yes, I do. I think this is um, above and beyond the usual community halls. It's really quite a heritage place in Futipuki, and it's really important that we maintain it well. So very much in support of the recommendation, sir. Okay. Yep, I'm um, seeking it and support it. Um, they do a great job and um, it has no impact on rates. I think this is the proposal was a very good one. And they would, the whole committee would like to just raise again that if um, in the, the library project that 
to, to do the best the council can to retain that building. Okay, okay thank you. All right, Councillor Coxie. Sorry, are we past questions? No, if you want a question, okay. you've got. No, I was just questioning um, the submission. Basically, the request was for 500,000, yet the items requested add up to 610. Just was there other funds supposedly or, or proposed to put towards this? Um, so they were raising some of their own funds towards the yeah. windows. Um, yeah. And when we assessed it, we said these are the items that are realistic to be able to be achieved in the next year. The car park that they're wanting month funds for is not, in our understanding, available yet in terms of the land. So there's no ability to do that. Councillor Henry. Um, I was just a bit confused that they, there's going to be no change to the um, targeted rate for the hall, but they're still going to be able to pay it off within a certain time. How, has that extended out the time? Because you didn't have a date there for when it went out to. Uh, yes, essentially. So they had an existing loan in place for earthquake strengthening that's now eight years old. Essentially, this add some more money to and extend it out for another nine years or 10 years. Uh, it's, I think, not between nine and 10 years to pay it off. So based on this additional borrowing, it was between nine and 10 years. All right, I'm gonna put the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against, carry. Thank you. Moving on to Tapuna Hall. Councillor Murray Benj. Happy to move option one, Sue, and happy to speak to it. Yeah, you know, I'll come back to that in a minute. Just getting some advice here, sorry. Can you repeat your question? I've moved. You moved option one, seconded Councillor Crawford. Any discussion? You will speak, Councillor. It's all a bit messy at the Maramatanga Park at the moment, and there are serious decisions to be made with the building coming down. So I think this is an appropriate <laughs> recommendation, Sue. Thank you. Mayor. Um, I just touched on this yesterday. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Dr. Um, Mayor, I think it's a good option too. It might be the, the better option. Uh, it recognises the actual cost for the Tapuna Hall and, uh, and the uncertainty around the Tapuna, Tapuna Community Centre. Um, so that... that I think that was the option that um, had been um, caucus before, but um, uh, happy to uh, debate that further. Okay. Well, you've heard that. I've had a mover for um, option one. You still wish to proceed with that, Councillor Murray Benj? It does. So it does. <laughs> if, if, you, if you want to push on with option one, I'm going to ask for a seconder. If you wish to, you could at this moment pull back and go with option two if you prefer. More than happy to do that if uh, Councillor Crawford is happy. Okay, all right. So we've moved to option two. Do we have a seconder? Oh, oh, oh you had already seconded. Sorry, sorry, that was my lapse. Yeah. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carry. Now, I was a bit remiss in the first item. We also have to provide feedback in terms of the uh, reasons for these decisions. So um, are you comfortable if we base these around the advantages and disadvantages that have been put forward? Um, it reads weirdly, because it says there's a disadvantage. The, the issues and options report hasn't actually doesn't make sense to me, the way that that one's written. It says the disadvantages of doing this is that the hall will fall into disrepair, which is quite the opposite. Um, so I don't quite know what happened with that wording. I wasn't going to worry about it, but if we're going to quote from it for the reasons, it doesn't make any sense. Just It says the disadvantages of option A are that, I'm just trying to scroll back to find the right page. <laughs> so many pages. What page is it on? Uh, it's page 17, and you're correct, a knot is missing. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that changes it. So, yes, if we're going to do the reasons, let's just make sure we do it with a not in there. We'll not fall into a state of disappear. But also, the second one, the Hall Committee will not miss out, I presume, yeah. should be, this is two knots missing. So, the, the disadvantages are opposite what they should be. Um, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some thought put into working these I'll out. So far. Thank you. So, I, th I think if we go by the advantages, would be helpful. Yep. All right. Promote the advantages. Exactly. Okay, thank you. All right. So we will we'll will follow that principle. If there are additional points on any matter that you wish to be included, bring them up as we go through. But if we could move on um, then to the reserve projects, please. Now, I'll just give a quick overview of this one, given the sheer size of the option. Uh, the issues and options paper starts at page 32. Uh, this is in response to uh, the submissions that were raised, the submission points that were raised regarding reserves projects. Uh, you'll see that a number of these projects have been referred to either the long-term plan or other more appropriate processes. Um, uh, so the recommended option is option one, however, there is always the option that um, elected members may decide that another appropriate response is required to certain submissions. Okay, thank you. Councillor Sol. Thank you, Mr Chair. Now, this is going to spread over a little bit here, but sir, Russian roulette. I don't know how many have played it with a, a uh, revolver, but this council or these councils have played Russian roulette with the people in Waihi Beach for some time regarding flooding of, of the town. So when I look at things that are coming in here, be they out of rate money uh, being rated or whether they are out of the um, rates reserve, to be honest, the look is disgusting that we would even consider doing things in our reserve at Waihi Beach, and may I say even further on, um, about a library, when people have lost everything, some are not going to get back in their homes, etc. So to me, I cannot support in particular um, the, the issues here regarding Wilson Park and the, and the reserve side of it. And I challenge any one of these councillors to not agree, because frankly, whilst it might be in there, we have got obligations, and these obligations are, and, and plans have been there for 10 years or more. So to me, as an, uh, 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 I guess, a contribution towards the issues that we face, I'm more than happy to actually, with well, not support these things going into Waihi Beach, if it's in any way going to cause any other issues with rates, and or if it means that those people miss out. This is a time when you've got to front up and accept the fact that it's been Russian roulette for a long time. Let's get on with actually starting to make things happen, as was presented earlier today by our um, uh, community board chair from Waihi Beach and also by a board member. There are two issues covered there, but so much funding has been removed over a period. It's time to make sure we've got those jobs happening and going to happen, that the planning for these jobs is able to be funded, and it should start basically today, well, if not last week, but certainly has not or cannot be afforded to be extended out for another year for a long-term plan. We need to start moving. And I really appeal to those members here to um, uh, maybe just have a little bit more of a social conscience for people and look at what they're prepared to let go or, or um, show some sort of uh, support of the people of Waihi Beach who have lost everything or something. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm going to go to Murray next. I would like the answer as to whether this is an and and or an either or situation. If it's an and and, then we haven't got a problem. If it's either or, then I could agree with uh, Councillor Sol, but I'm not sure that it is an either or, sir. 
Can I take up the funding streams? Yeah. Good. Well made point. Um, Mayor Dinger. Yeah, I'd like to challenge Councillor Sol. I think that's a really unfair and mischaracterization of this council, our staff and our elected members. As we heard earlier, money has not been taken out of stormwater in Waihee Beach. There's been shuffling around to, to allow for what can actually be achieved to match um, reality with what, um, what, what we can do. Um, I disagree strongly with the idea that we have to compare every single one of these IOPs with, with doing something in Waihee Beach. That is completely inappropriate. We have lots of different funding streams. We have a long-term plan which, which divvies up what goes where. We've got money that is in the kitty for Waihee Beach stormwater, and I will fully support that, and supporting our residents. Our staff have been magnificent in helping our residents into accommodation, looking after them. I just find it appalling that we, we try to hijack the annual plan process, which is for a whole bunch of different processes which people have been consulted on with the idea that we have to hold that hostage to, to sorting out Waihee Beach. That is just really bad governance. So I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that that's where, where things are going. But I, I, um, let's focus on the issues and options in front of us and we'll deal with Waihee Beach in due course, as I absolutely want to do. Thank you. Go to Councillor Henry next, please. Okay. It's, it's extremely difficult to come to this point in time to actually talk about cut, cutting or you know changing decisions. When you look up there, there are certain things up there that are really very important that we actually include. And the one, the Coast Care, which has had a huge boost, which, that, which it looks to be to do with the inflation um, re relative to their budget. Am I correct on that? For the Coast Care across the district? So that, that's one thing that's helping with, the, with stormwater events. And there's several um, stream catchment projects that are in there that are really valuable to across the whole district in terms of what weather, weather events that we're facing. But I think to come and look at breaking that down now, it's very difficult. I would support them as they are. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cox here. Um, to sort of following on from what Councillor Granger said, so is this an and, and, or an and, or? So, I mean, can this budget for the Waihi Beach um, proposed um, projects in the reserves be moved across like that? And is it a matter of how this looks at a time when people have suffered and have had flooded homes? Does this Is this a good look to go and spend the money here or can it be delayed for a year? These are more just my musings, I suppose. And I do note that the Matariki Gardens are where um, the community board were proposing that the pensioner flats, the temporary ones, would be housed. And we haven't even explored that yet. So I, I just wonder are these things that could be delayed without, without causing major issues as well? Some, some reasonable points there. I'm going to ask um, Mr. Ellis to comment, but um, yeah, it's not as simple as moving, you know, reserves money can't just be moved to other op options like that. And so there's a, it's a complicated arrangement, as perhaps the Mayor's already alluded to. But um, Mr. Ellis. I think the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor have already covered it. So we have multiple funding streams and we don't tend to shift them between funding streams. So the funding here for the reserves funding um, is partly general rate and partly financial contributions. The financial contributions can't be shifted. The general rate could be. In terms of the stormwater, we have the stormwater um, uniform targeted rate, uh, which covers across the district into two different portions, uh, growth communities and um, small communities. Uh, that budget, that 10-year budget, includes uh, the rates component and includes some financial con contribution components depending on the project. Uh, as you're aware, there's the ability to shift funding um, forwards and backwards um, as projects can progress. So if the council says, goes, um, we want an absolute focus on projects X, Y, and Z in Waihi Beach, 
then the funding can be shifted to match that, provided we can get the resources to deliver the projects. Um, I would say though, and this is probably slightly outside the answer I'm supposed to give, is some of that flooding would have occurred irrespective of whether the projects are in place or not. And, and on top of that, the planning that's been talked about to address some of these projects, the constraints that are around that make it difficult to achieve. But planning has certainly been taking place for as long as I've sat on this council for the past nine and a half years. So um, I think I was over the other side, Councillor Joyce. So, I mean, I have a lot of sympathy for what Alan's saying because I don't think Waihi Beach is hanging out, for example, for the renovation of Wilson Park. I mean, when it was first proposed, it was quite elaborate. The local residents actually asked the council to scale it down. I don't feel there's a great demand for that. I also understand that, you know, it's not a lack of funding from what Gary's saying that's delayed the stormwater. I think we do need to find out what is delaying the stormwater because it's becoming untenable. Um, I was intrigued to hear you say rates because I'm looking at my favorite spreadsheet, the 100 line jobby. And according to this, the Wilson Park is funded from asset replacement reserve 60% and financial contribution reserve 40%. So the 40% is when you say rates funding, right? Um, because it's not coming from current year rates, we've actually allocated from the rates reserve 40% of that cost. Um, and then, yeah, there's another one in there as well, which we may come to is just why to koi koi. You know, there is, there is a need to focus on some of these infrastructure issues. People have had enough and they're really angry. Um, if cutting this makes no difference, I agree. No, don't cut it, there's no point. But I think, I think the message is we need to address these issues. It needs to be an and and. Um, and we need, if we need to move things around between now and August when we finalize the budget, yeah, if we're not going to do it today, we may need to revisit it if we can't find a way of doing it. But I also take the point that it's not necessarily lack of money, it's a lack of something else. I don't know whether it's urgency or just industry constraints or resource consents, but you know, we're not getting the job done. The status quo is no longer tenable. So if we're not going to touch this budget, then we're going to have to find another way to move forward and move forward reasonably rapidly on stormwater and number one road in particular. Mr. Ellis, were you getting ready to respond there a minute ago? Oh, it's probably just a funding question was the um, financial contributions obviously come from external, the asset replacement reserve is rates funded. It just funds the depreciation, which is then pulled out of the depreciation account. Thank you, Councillor Murray Benj. Sir, I'd, I'd like to uh, support what Councillor Sol said. He brought it up at the wrong time, but that's beside the point. What he reflected on is the fact that people are hurting and those that have lost everything have still, their rates have to be still paid and uh, they're significant even in Waihi Beach. And so that's one of the great dilemmas that we have. But in defence of previous councils, Tauranga sort of old county, um, developed Waihi Beach on a swamp and so the drainage issue has been there for a very long time and as we and Councillor uh, Ross Gardy would have been on council when we decided to lift the houses, uh, give people the right to lift their houses and so sir I, I stand by that but at the reserve that we've got in front of us I look at the Hako stream catchment project and think to myself, blimey, when I look at that stream, it's so bogged down now and it's all um, got the problem of Tapuna uh, Station Road dilemma as well. It's a nightmare and it makes Waihi Beach look really quite good, actually. So, Sue, I just, it's, it's where it needs to be, but blimey, it's going to be a problem in my opinion. Okay, well, we've gone a long way around, and um, I was supposed to be still in questions, but um, have you do got another question? No, I think we need to stop. I'm going to ask for a mover and a seconder um, for one of the options here, please. Sir, I just wish to make a statement. I actually am referring to the, um, the Wilson Park part of that there which i didn't make clear okay thank you so mayor the move mr chairman option, option one. one yes thank you second, second to councillor henry i'll put the motion all in favor 
Against? Carry. Okay, thank you. Beach Road Boat Ramp. So any questions in regarding to this one? Councillor Joyce. Can I just check what funding is in place for this and whether whether that funding would partly come from the sale of the house on the end, please, because that would certainly make life a lot easier to move forward. So those questions, what is funding is in place for this project, if any? And yeah, is, is selling the house an option to fund it? The funding will come from the concept plan budget that's already existing. And we're only proposing to do the concept planning process in the next financial year. Any further development and the cost of that will have to be brought back to you uh, and the concept plan agreed. So we can we can cover where the funding comes from for delivery at that point. Okay, so I hope that's clear. We have a mover and a second, Councillor Granger. Thank you, sir. Yes, unless we do the uh, concept planning now, um, we won't be in a position to discuss it and put anything in the long-term plan. So that puts it up back an awful long way. So my recommendation is we move with option one. Seconded, um, Councillor Thwaites. I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Thank you. Option one. So we're down to cycleways and walkways. Do you have any questions? Councillor Murray Bench. If we deferred this, would we be able to spend that money on roading? Um, the, the majority of the um, walking and cycling budget has come from um, the roading rate. Uh, so um, we consider that cyclewise and footpaths are roading. Uh, so it's just a different mode of transport. So um, it depends if you're defining roading as just vehicles or you're defining roading as transport movement. Second question. Second question, Sue. If that's the case, does that come from the users of vehicles on roads? be they trucks or cars, they're the user pay people. Is that where the funding actually is coming from? Uh, no. So the majority of the funding for the walking and cycling that comes out of the rates. So it's rates funded. And then on some projects, we will get a subsidy from Wakakotahi, which is funded from the users. But um, that's only in specific cases where you can... Um, demonstrate a demand and get the benefit cost. Councillor Granger. Thank you, sir. I do believe that in the current situation with the damage that we've had, that we should take some of this money from cycling, not necessarily all of it, and certainly not um, to uh, postpone it all, but take some of it from um, the cycling projects to uh, repair the roads that have been damaged. At that point, I'm how you split it because I recognise that some of it is dedicated to cycling. Well, while you think about that, we'll go to Councillor Joyce. Um, just a question with Waka Katahi being under such funding pressure, is there any, what is are we sort of sure that they would still be around to, I mean, are they going to be around, but are they going to be interested in walking and cycling over the next little while, given that they've got you know, diverting massive resources to road repairs and in, including our own? Um, so, so based on the current GPS, they are still interested in walking and cycling in modal shift, and I don't think that's going to change. Uh, and their focus has been towards urban areas, um, such as the um, the Tipuki project that's been looked at at the moment, and that's potentially 100% funded from Wakotahi. Um, in those cases, we put a lot of effort into achieving those, those outcomes and accessing that funding. For... Um, some of our other projects, they just won't receive any subsidy. They don't fit that category, but they fit the community connectivity category, um, the accessibility, the recreation. So there's a range of reasons why uh, walking and cycling is put in place, um, but they don't all get subsidy. 
Um, Councillor Crawford. So that amount, how much, you know, roading repair can happen if you took a portion of that 1.3 million. And also um, just, you know, being involved in the cycle walkway in our area, um, that um, a lot of times council is more enabling and giving permission than actually financially um, building. And so um, I think we should take that in a light. But I'd like to know if you were to take some of that, you know, is that like a drop in the bucket when it comes to the amount of money it needs to go and repairing our roads? Um, so in terms of repairing the roads, the um, current subsidy we're getting at the moment is 91%. We're still waiting for confirmation what it will be for the future. The net cost to council for the road repairs for the storm events we've had this year, uh, um, depending on subsidy, but we're at 71% is around five to six million, of which we've already got some, we've already paid for some of that. Um, and as per um, the papers we've provided in the past, is we're going to be using that, the reserve accounts we've got in writing to fund that. Um, if you were going to divert walking and cycling funding to something else, then it would probably go to road rehabilitation. Um, a half a million dollars out of the walking and cycling budget would maybe do three quarters of a kilometre, half to three quarters of a kilometre of road rehab. If I look at the impact in the community, half a million on walking and cycling achieves a big outcome. Um, uh, road rehab will fund over time, um, or we might do heavy maintenance and hold the road for another five years. Uh, so it's probably about your strategic outcomes, about what you're trying to achieve. Um, we will always do road maintenance and we'll always be um, getting funding from Wakote for road maintenance. Thank you. Mayor Daniel. I was happy to move option option one, please. Could I just check whether these other people have questions first, please? Yeah, Councillor Coxie. You, no, no, you go first, Grant. Wait. Um, just, just a question about the funding requested from Waka Kotahi for the storm events. Did that include Tapuna Station Road? Um, at the moment, Tapuna Station Road's on the list, but we still have to make that decision making in terms of uh, what the, um, I guess, decision is around about opening to Pune Station Road up or not. So the assessment we've done so far is we can open up single lane at a at a cost. Um, opening up two ways is, as we've said initially, about four mil is probably not viable. Okay, Grant, did you have a question? Uh, your I was really wanted to speak in support of option one. Uh, oh, well, if you're wanting to do that, just wait a minute. Yeah. But um, but oh. I have got a question. Gary, you said before that number one road, you've got the money and the budget for the rehab. Does that include the widening as well? Uh, the widening is probably a little more challenging. Um, so, and that relates to our, our current um, program. So in terms of the funding, we're allocated for what we call low cost, low risk improvements, which is where we fund the widening from. Um, we've spent our Waka Kautai allocation, three year allocation in two years. So we're seeking a top up of that with Waka Kautai. Um, so that's one of the decision making points we're going through at the moment is around exactly how uh, we do number one road and what work we do. For example, proposal was to put a cycleway down number one road to Trevelyan's pack house. That's about two million to do that. Um, we won't get subsidy on that and that then becomes a prioritisation as going, is that a good spend for that one location or is it a better spend elsewhere? Okay, Councillor Henry, you had a question? Um, going back to John Key with the idea of the cycleway, you know, top to the bottom and coming back up again. See way around New Zealand on the on cycle. Um, it, when we last try in, and we seem to get a lot of money in terms of that and under that sort of umbrella. I see. Are we? There's none. None in here. Is that that fund strength funding stream dried up and no longer there? Why are we not including that and in some of some of that kind of money tapping into that some kind of money for cycleways? So so the, the, what you agreed in terms of the walking and cycling um, activity or the implementation plan is that you budget 
the amount that you've you've got, and then we seek funding on top of that. So the idea is you expand the budget through external funding. But because the external funding is uncertain, we can't budget for it. So we just it becomes an extra and it means we can do additional jobs. So a good example would be Tourism Infrastructure Fund. We got Tourism Infrastructure Fund last year. Um, it paid towards setting uh, Whatara Road at Tech Park, um, which was a benefit from a roading perspective, but it's also a benefit from the park and from tourism perspective. Uh, so we equally we do that with walking and cycling, is where we can get additional funding. We utilise that to for project to proceed. Question to that: So the the amount that we're looking in there, that will all be used. But if you can get additional funding, that will accept, make that a bigger project. You're intending to use all that money, right? Thank you, Councillor Murray Benz. Final question. Um, yes, sir. I want to know um, how much would we be able to reduce our rate demand if we took 800,000 out of this budget? Because this is the one area where we can do it. 800,000 is about 1%. Okay. James, you were wanting to move option one? I was wanting to move option one. Um, there is a, a lot of community expectation in this area and Progress is often at a pretty glacial pace anyway, um, dependent as it is on consents, external funders, which we leverage our funds to, with external funds. Uh, and then uh, you've got landowner permissions and stuff, which, which just take a long time. This IOP came about from a very small number of people who just were seeking any way to save, save on rents, but rates. But it would be pretty unfair, I think, to cut things out without the community having had any inclination that this was on the cards. This is not a groundswell of view. If we, if we cut this now in the cycling community and, and, and every resident who uses walking and cycling paths, they'll just feel the rug's been pulled un, un, from under them with no, no inclination that, was, that we were considering that. I think that would be, that'd be pretty unfair. So um, that's why I'm um, supporting option one. Council Thwaites. You wishing to second? Yeah, I'd wish to second that. Can I speak to it now then? Yes, you can. Yeah, I agree entirely with the Mayor. Um, three people submitted on it. I attended a community meeting at Quarry Park not long ago. I probably told you about it. Over 70 people attended. Probably 30 told me about a footpath access on Munro Road, which is in the lifestyle zone that we have zoned that has paid millions of dollars of FinCoast to this district and not one cent has gone back into that district. So that's just an example of a project that's not even, even on the list currently, let alone I fully support all the existing ones. So I fully support and um, I'm looking for it to get further, uh, spread further and wide. And like I said, that Munro Road, people have submitted to this council for the last 12 years and it just keeps bouncing back, bouncing back. Now they're paying millions in FinCoast and receiving absolutely nothing in that area. Okay, so building parks and other things, other else. Thank you. You wish to speak, Grant? Uh, yeah, I'll sort of also speak in support of option one. Um, for, for exact same reasons Don and, and James have outlined. Um, and, and also reading through the submissions, I think the submissions and support have not all been picked up. There are other submissions that reference walkways and cycleways that haven't been put in the issue, not issues and option paper. So I think the number of supporters as opposed to the number of objectors or, or who, who proposed option two are quite significant. And um, yeah, I, I know going forward, if there's a change of government, we've heard from certain uh, uh, members of parliament suggesting that cycleways are, a, are not a, a, a wise spend on roading, but so our future subsidy from Waka Kotahi may be under threat. So we do need to, I think, protect this budget. And uh, even the last long-term plan consultation that we did, there was strong support for the walkway and cycleway proposals. So um, I'm, I'm not, I, I can see a short-term benefit and maybe doing something here, but we've got to find other ways to fix our roads and, and I think our discussion next year in the long-term plan, we've got to really seriously look at squeezing the pipeline and um, 
maybe pushing things out a little bit further to if we're going to avoid these major rates rises. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crawford, did you wish to speak? Okay, yeah, I just um, so you support option one. Um, again, just what the Mayor said about, um, you know, the process of getting these things across the line um, takes time and, uh, you know, um, we wouldn't want to see that interrupted so we can yeah, go forward in the future. Yep. Okay, thank you. Councillor Murray Bench. I'd like to move an amendment, sir, that we remove 870000 from the rate funding from the cycleway development and uh, because it will reduce our rates by a further 1%. And that's hurting people, okay. the way it's standing at the moment. So you've moved. Council Joyce has seconded that amendment. Um, so is there anyone speaking for or against that amendment? If I could speak for it, sir, I think uh, that this budget is really a critical one. Uh, we may have had submissions uh, in support of it, but we know it is a recreation uh, use for our cycleways and our walkways, but it's at the same time, our first responsibility is budgeting to the rate that people can afford to pay. And at the moment, with the cost of living going the way it is and inflation the way it is, our job is to make sure that we are budgeting and we are conservative in our approach. So I stand by um, what I have moved. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Joyce? So I've seconded this because uh, to take on Margaret's point, you know, we have heard from a large number of people that the rates are an issue. Um, it's not fair to say, it's disingenuous to say only you know, a few people have this, said this. This is the suggestion of how we can do it. Yeah, you know, we're looking for ways to keep the rates down. Well, hello, it's, here, here's one. And I think we need to do that. It's a cost of living crisis, as we keep hearing. People are struggling with their daily bills. Um, you know, more economic data out this week showing people are spending less because they can't afford to do things. Um, you know, we've got to play our role. Um, and this is a way of doing it. You know, we're not saying completely gut the budget, but we just need to wind it back a bit. And people have said, hey, why don't you wind it back so we can you know, save our energy for another day? And if, we, if we're really serious about looking after our ratepayers, this is an area that we can do it in. Thank you, Councillor Sol. Thank you, sir. Yes, I basically um, would be prepared to support this because, again, the reason being, I stood for election on basically prudent behaviour with our rates. That's one of the issues there is that it's an area we can reduce what's happening to. Um, to our, our rates. Um, I otherwise basically, sir, um, I've, I've had to move within myself um, to even accepting around where, where our draft annual plan landed because of the issues that have happened further down the line or of recent days. And um, I think one of the areas that stands out more to our people is having decent roads or more money spent on them, um, keeping them in better nick than what we have. And for whatever reason, we haven't kept them in that greater nick. And, and that's the case there, sir. Um, but I would support this even with it, it coming out of the budget altogether, because I do believe we are still too high in our rates. Thank you, Councillor Thwaites. Yeah, I won't be supporting this amendment. Um, it's quite amazing, really. The champion of the cycleway between um, through Tipuna is moving to cut the budget. Um, I see here the submitter wanting Mulgan Street and Caddy Caddy down to the bridge uh, improved. It's a narrow, tiny bit. I've been to um, Lockhead Road, which is part of the designated cycleway, which has a blind cycle, which um, residents have called me down and cited it. And, it's so narrow there, there's no room to even get vehicles through and then cycles are going through. I know we're not going to solve all the problems in, in one world and, and Grant's championed a lot of projects around Tipuki and they're starting to come to fruition and to just cut out 800,000. They're not all, I know the benefits that are coming, you know, from the Minden path and I passed them today as I rat ran my way here today. Um, so... I just see all these projects, and some of them are tied up with road improvements where um, 
pedestrian and cycle improvements are and and Gary uses, oh sorry, well the, the manager involved uses that funding stream to to enable those projects. So I won't be supporting the uh, amendment. Councillor Wickers. Yeah, I won't be supporting it either. Um, for a couple of reasons. The um, it's effectively $35 a year on your rate, so that's less than a dollar a week. Um, so it's the actual effect is so minimal. Um, and the, the other point is that this is this is a, a funding stream that's leveraged, so um, it gets amplified by other sources. So when we cut it, the amplification also gets cut. So um, uh, for those two reasons, I, I can't support it. Thank you. Go to the Mayor. Um, noting this is not my right to reply, this is just speaking against the motion. Um, I, I won't be supporting it. I think, um, as, as I mentioned before, um, this is something that the community has told us they're very passionate about. The community has not had a chance to comment on this um, idea of, of cutting this. And I think that um, we're just doing stuff on the hoof, you know, okay. absolutely on the hoof. Okay, all right. I've exhausted the speakers, so I'm going to put the amendment, which was to cut the $870,000 from the Roading uh, from the walking and cycling budget. Yeah. So uh, those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. We'll show of hands, please. Division. Or division, all right, we'll have a division. Those um, in support of the amendment? So we've got Rodney, Margaret, Ellen, Tracy. Those against? We've got in you've got the ones on this one. Yep. Yep. Okay, so the amendment is lost. Big four six. Four six. Oh well, I will I'll vote um against the motion to Against the amendment, I should have said, sorry. So um, we've put that one to bed. So we revert to the original motion. So um, I'm trying to think. The mayor moved it. Who, who? Oh, yes. Thank you. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Carried. All right, we'll have a division then. Are those um, in support of the motion? Eight, three. No, 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 there was for the motion. Sorry, that's there. Yeah, so there was Anne, Murray, the James, um, Grant, Richard, and there was Ricky uh, Stoyts and myself. Good morning, Kenya. Right. So, so yes, it was eight four. So we. Oh, sorry, sorry. Take the correction. Those against. All right. We're going to pause and have a break for morning tea. If we can be back here by ten past eleven.
All right, councillors, we've given everybody the invite to be here. If there are more important discussions, um, so be it. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> Rebecca, if we could uh, open up on this next topic, why he? Yes, we did have. We had a minute ago. We we do. We've got seven of us here. Eight. Some right. We're going. Uh, the Waihe Beach Library and Community Hub uh, issues an options paper. You'll find at page fifty-five of your agenda. The recommended option is option one, which was what was contained in the consultation document uh, that we consulted on. So do we have any questions on that? It seems not. Do we have a mover then? And Council. Thank you, Councillor Henry. Do we have a second to Councillor Joyce? Why any speakers? Um, we'll start down the end then, Councillor Granger. Yeah. I my concern is about the optics of this one um, with spending money on a quote nice to have uh, given the situation out in Waihe Beach whether it would look right and whether or not option three would be a better answer than option one. Okay. Um, Mayor Denya. I just go to speak in favour. The, um, there is no cost to rate payers on this one and it shows that council is making progress um, which has been um, consulted on significantly, both in you know, location and in some initial views on, on the, the look and so on. So uh, we need to keep moving on this one. Uh, it'll be a little while before it's actually built anywhere, I suspect, but um, we just need to keep this, this project moving because the Y Beach Library and Community Hub, as it stands, is completely inadequate. Councillor Crawford, did you wish to speak? Was it Councillor Daly? Someone had a hand waving over. No. All right. I'll, I'll come across the other side, Councillor Sol. Thank you, sir. No, I, I can't support option one. Um, again, straight out as put the optics. The cynic in me just sort of says that here we are. We do have a library. It's not the best. I am not a Philistine, sir. I believe in, in, in the use of libraries, etc. But again, um, to me, it's almost like uh, we're saying to people that have lost all their books and worldly goods, for instance, at present, and people in the community, if we consulted, the people would rather see a lot more done on the stormwater at Waihe Beach than any of these other peripheral things at this moment. So I personally would have been supporting um, option three. Um, as I say, the people that lost their books, well, it's great. They could go to a nice new library to read the books they lost. Um, yeah, just not for me, sir. Okay, Councillor Henry. So, um, in option one, I believe the um, process is to actually look at what we had minuted before, after we got the, a cost for the first design concept, which was far more than we thought. So, this, does, this is looking at a process of going through and looking at re- looking at that design and reducing the cost down for that. So that is just what we're voting for now. So it is not, um, I, have to, I don't, haven't got it here, but the budget line for that is not, I can't, it's not, not a great it, amount. It's not about building a library. It's not about it's building about a library. Being prepared. So it's prepared. It's moving ahead. And of course, what we've experienced this year with inflation, the longer we wait, the higher it's going to be. So you, you need to... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You don't wish to add to that, Mr. Ellis? Well, probably all I can say is we've started the process in terms of um, point two of the, yeah. Um, yeah. in terms of the rescoping. So we're already underway on that. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Murray Benj. Sir, I think this uh, Waihe Beach has the worst library in the whole of the sub region by far, and they've suffered enough, and we really have to start, keep looking to the future. So 
I'm in favour of option one, Sue. Thank you, Councillor Thwaites. Yeah, I support option one. I have a family member who lives in the Otahonga District Council and I did step her out there beautiful library in their main street that covers the whole district, 300 square metres, and it covers the whole of the Oklahoma District Council. Multiply that by 6,000 or even 7,000. It's actually got corrugated iron walls, looks really smart, roof. $2 million would build that. So I'm staggered. I just hope the design looks at options that are far more economical than has been talked about because half a million dollar design and build, oh, I'd build half the thing for that. You better brush up your CV and apply for a job on the review uh, team. Uh, Councillor Joyce. I have some sympathy for what Councillor Granger and Councillor Sol are saying, um, but I do think it's a long-term project. Um, we need to get the cost down, as Councillor Thwaites says, um, you know, but we do need a good library facility. So we've already deferred construction. Yeah, you know, we've, we've already said, nah, we don't like the, the uh, very posh design we had before. We want something more reasonable that it delivers for the people of Waihi Beach. If I thought not doing this would actually make a difference to any stormwater in Waihi Beach, then I probably would have moved with option three, but it's not gonna make a difference. We've been told the stormwater issues in Waihi Beach from the council's, council's perspective are not a sh lack of cash, but there's something is wrong there, right? It's, maybe it's a lack of urgency. Maybe yeah, we need to dig into why we've got so far behind the eight ball on Waihi Beach stormwater. Yeah, maintenance issues a lot. We need a deep dive into that, but further delaying the initial work on the library, unfortunately will not help that other than make us look good in some eyes. And so I think we need to go ahead with this modest proposal to get ready for a more modest, but pretty, Corrugated iron, maybe, library, um, yeah, in a couple of years' time. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Sorry. Carried. Yes, I will have to report to you. All right. Dave Hume and Paul, we're ready to go. So, Rebecca, do you wish to comment? No. Okay, questions? Just the clarification, um, same as last time, just making sure that we're talking about the pool cover and in this one, is it the bulkhead as well? And the, it, it's all, it's, all it's in it's one. All in one. one. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Granger? We read out and consulted, and we were given a fairly strong message. There. So, option one is the one that I would propose. You're, you're moving. Yeah, and Councillor Henry seconded. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Right, do we have any questions here on roading and transportation? From page 72. Seems no questions. Do we have a mover waiting in the wings somewhere? Councillor Crawford. You're moving option one. Is that correct? Councillor Crawford? You were moving option one? Yep. Okay. We have a seconder. Councillor Murray Benj. Don't see. All right. Councillor Joyce, questions? Vegetation removal to Puki. I'm, I'm forever hearing about people over there. They don't like the vegetation. They can't see over the roundabouts. I know it's an operational manager manage, a matter, but can we just make sure we do more than just you know, give them a, a haircut? Um, I'm an expert on pruning. You know, I don't have much hair, so, so um, I'm not offering to go out and do it. But you know, can we just make sure we address those? Because you just hear them all the time in Tipuki. I mean, people are obviously unhappy with the fact they can't see over the roundabouts and don't feel safe. Um, and then we've also talked about the speed management plan in here. 
two months ago I asked for the maps, I was told I could have them in three or four weeks. So I've asked again today. So we'd really, really like to see those, please. Yep, thank you. Um, I can comment. Yes, it is difficult to see around the roundabouts and they operate as stops often rather than keeping traffic flowing, but the plants do grow very fast. And yeah. Um, yeah, Councillor Crawford. Uh, um, just some feedback on that too, Rodney, is that you do hear that noise, but for those, when we had a, uh, some consultation on that, it was, it was sort of like a 50-50. So the 50 who really appreciate the town set are the ones who actually live there and dwell in there and, and move amongst it. It's only those who want to get from one side to the other. And the other issue too is that um, we do need to control the traffic there and um, they do a good job of making people slow down the roundabouts, you know, and and where sometimes people wouldn't just have the grass, could see a long way ahead and they would boot it and cause a lot of issues, you know. And so as a person being in the fire brigade there, we've hardly had any accidents at all. If none that I can remember, bar a guy getting knocked, knocked off his bike in the last 10 years. Thank you. Come across Councillor Murray Binge. Sir, I think this is probably the most important issue that we've got in our agenda today. And when it comes to roading, um, the questions are still coming in from the nightmare that people have gone through in the last few weeks. In Namuahini Road, for example, the potholes suddenly are back there again. And uh, if you try to avoid them, you'll go over the edge of the, the uh, side of the road into the river. And so it's. Uh, uh, keeping our culverts clean and making sure that our drainage systems on our highways and roads is really quite fundamental. And so, sir, I'm fully in support of this recommendation. Option one. Thank you. I think I've exhausted then the speakers. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. So, down to the lovely issue of fluoridation. <laughs> when you're finished, Councillor Cox here. Thank you. Um, got a few questions for you, Gary, on this one. Just um, some things that have come to me since the workshop. Um, so how many water treatment plants do we actually have? Because I know you, you indicated that it may be there's two more in this area where we're being um, mandated that may also need attention of the same nature. But how many in the whole district are there? There's nine. Nine. Yeah. So, so we've got a range of plants across the district. So we have a what we call a distributed network and we have um, plants scattered through the district servicing the different areas and there's some interconnectivity. So the area we're talking about here in terms of Waihe Beach, Kitty Kitty, there's four different um, bores or treatment areas that supply that, that area. Yeah, yeah. And so um, to be effective in terms of the fluoridation, you need all four to have it um, implemented. And that's been our current discussions with the, the ministry. And so we're expecting that direction to come through. So, so do we know why we were one of 14 councils that were um, directed to do this, given that only 21 councils currently in New Zealand actually have fluoride in their water? Uh, we understand it's from the, the health statistics and the deprivation indexes, but essentially they've chosen the 14 from their um, I guess figures they've got and their back and the data they have, and they've determined this is where it's going to be most effective. Okay, because I've got evidence that contradicts that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Granger. Thank you, sir. Um, I would like to know um, how we get on with the hazardous substances and new organisms Act 1996, where it says in Section Seven, all persons exercising functions, powers, and duties under this Act including but not limited functions, powers and duties under some sections, shall take into account the need for caution in maintaining adverse effects where there is scientific and technical uncertainty about those effects. And the effects are any potential or probable effect, any positive or adverse effect, any temporary or permanent effect, any past, present or future effect, any acute or chronic effect, 
and any cumulative effect which arises over time in combination with other effects. So we know there's a heck of a lot of uncertainty and um, scientific uncertainty and technical uncertainty about the effects of the toxin of fluoride on people. Uh, so are we square with the, this act if we go ahead? Uh, so there'd be two parts to that. One is um, from the public health perspective. We're not the experts in that, the ministry is, and they have the experts that provide them the information to make this decision. Uh, so they would take that into account. The second part for us is health and safety about how we operate those plants when the chemicals are in place and the need to protect our workers. Um, so those are probably the two parts to it, but in terms of the public health and adding it to water supplies, that's a question for the ministry. But we are the ones that would be liable under the Health mm -hmm. Hazardous yeah. Substances Act for doing it. Okay, um, Councillor Henry. There's something about this that doesn't ring true for me, and um, I am currently looking at option two that I would propose that we would follow. I And I do realise that there's an implication to the council if we do not follow that line, and I had asked for the co what would be an expected kind of cost if we did go down that line, and but yet it has not been forthcoming. <laughs> Uh, two hundred thousand and two hundred ten thousand a day. Ten thousand a day. Okay. So for for one, if it's to do with with um, people's health and in particularly probably children's health, why isn't it mandated across the whole district? That seems very strange. Pub, um, the health of people's teeth does not um, begin with fluoride. It begins with dental hygiene. And um, so I, I just I just cannot. Oh, the other thing too is is, is my, as Councillor Granger said that when that is in the system, it is almost impossible to filter out if you choose not to have it. It doesn't filter out, and and we do not really know the health impl implications on that. Um, when when we grew up as kids, we drank the water from the river, and our mother made us have fluoride tablets. I didn't always take them. My teeth aren't as good as my brothers and sisters. But um, so I, I'm not happy. So I will stick with two. If anyone else feels the same, they can support me. <laughs> I'll just comment that I know this is a very emotive topic, but uh, I, I was explained to me recently by a lady I met who uh, is a dentist and very involved in dentistry, and it was explained that... Uh, Fluoride was first identified as a benefit in teeth health from um, explorations of why <clears throat> teeth in some communities were much better than in others and identified the difference was fluoride. So we you need to be that? careful of getting involved in having our own views around the benefits or otherwise. It's only and good in terms of this, the water. please, let me finish. And we need to recognise that or remember that this is not a desire of council to be involved in this field but a direction from central government agency and as as you highlighted um, that that raises implications if council chooses not to plead, proceed with this so just bear those thoughts in mind so you had another question Tracy well we haven't moved yet so um yeah. So we have we exhausted the questions? Okay. So then we are, Tracy. We, if you want to move something, an alternate to the uh, options that are before us, perhaps now is your time. Thank you. Um, and I did signal this in the workshop as well. Um, and I notice in the notes here, council could consider opposing on the behalf of those that um, actually submitted against putting fluoride in our water. And my um, proposal would be that the Western Bay of Plenty District Council seeks an exemption from the requirements to add fluoride to the Athenry and Fada Fada drinking water supply and prepares a submission to the Ministry of Health as such. Okay, perhaps can you repeat that just so everybody takes it up? Yeah. 
I can seek I, an, I've seek, got a, He's basically a, seeking an exemption. Seeking an exemption, correct. Well, yeah, we'll do that now before I seek a, whether, see whether there's a, um, a seconder for that. Do we, do we know, I mean, there's natural fluoride in water supplies, right, to a degree. Do we know how much fluoride we have in our, naturally in our water supplies? So do, do we keep that information? Yeah, I mean, because there are risks of overfluoridation, right? Quite known health risks of overfluoridation. So to add fluoride without knowing what's there now, is actually to me a risk. So I mean, we I think we yeah. So we don't know. Perhaps, Mr. Ellis, if you could, um, more importantly, indicate the um, concentration rate at which it is required to be added. Oh, um, I think you told me once before. It was, it was it's a low concentration rate. I think but very yeah, in parts per million, like well, one part per million, one to or, three parts per million. I think it is. Yeah. But it's I, I I need to check on that. I've got that here, but not at tip my fingertips. In terms of the question about natural fluoride in the water supply, we're required to, as part of the um, implementation of this, to have a testing regime in place to show that the appropriate concentration is within the network. So that would pick up your question around natural fluoride in the water. Okay, so um, Councillor Henry, you were wanting to second that proposal? No, that seemed, I did, did put a motion before. Motion forward when I was talking, but there wasn't a second there. So sorry. I, huh? No, it wasn't asked for. Sorry, you didn't ask whether there's a seconder for my motion. Sorry, but I am happy to to um, support Councillor Coxhead. Coxhead, thank you. Um, uh, her motion, yes. I, I I would like some more time. What? Right. Sorry. You wanted to speak to that? No, no Sorry. Can I have All right, question? we'll get the question out then. Yes, I, I just wanted, have we um, consulted with Tangata Whenua on this? And is there a Tamanaro to Y statement about it um, that we need to take into account? Uh, so no, we haven't specifically consulted. And so we would have deemed that the ministry would have undertaken that process. And that consultation, no, um, in general, because it's their responsibility because they are making that order. Hang on, I'm, Councillor Murray Benj has been waiting for a while, so I'm going to go back across the. This is a subject I feel quite strongly about. Uh, whether I'm in favour of fluoridation or not is absolutely irrelevant. Um, in my experience, uh, the community is divided on the issue. And one of the things I think that's sad about this Ministry of Health is that it's taken away the community's right to decide. And sometimes we need to actually ask people whether they want it or they don't want it. And when I did that in Waimari, the first person, and we, we had no opinion, we put it out there for the community with all the information and it came out and fluoridation and the first person to call me was a doctor to thank me because people could self-medicate but sir uh, we do have a teeth, tooth problem and the amount of money that we're going to have to spend um, on introducing this and supervising it testing it we would be able to buy toothbrushes for every child in this district and provide them with toothpaste and we'd, we'd do a jolly good job so i i agree uh, Councillor uh, Coxhead's motion is one that says, please um, listen to us. The submissions that came in were passionate and people felt so strongly about the subject and you cannot ignore that. So, sir, I'm happy to support the, recommend the, amend the recommendation it is because we didn't have anything else before us. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going next. I think I'll go to Councillor Henry. You're finished. Okay. Councillor Thwaites. Yeah, I won't be supporting the um, is it, is it amendment. No, it's the motion. amendment, is it, to this? Um, um, it's an alternative. To answer because we, we hadn't moved yep. either of these. To answer Councillor Joyce's question in Wellington, there is 0.1 milligrams naturally occurring in the Wellington water supply. Wellington have water. 
health department recommend 0.7 to 1. So one seventh of the recommended rate is already in the water in Wellington before they add anything to it. If people feel so strongly about drinking fluoridated water in the Western Bay of Pliny, they can actually do the district a big help by connecting up their rainwater roofs to a tank and reticulating their house. That would that would supply them with water or move to the 5,000 properties in our district. That, sorry, and more than that, about 5,000, 6,000 properties that don't have um, council water anyway. I think you're in that, he's in that. There's probably a number around James is in it. There's a number who don't receive council water already. So those are options that can be done if you feel that strongly and you'll actually be doing the district a big favor and not having to put down more bores and more reservoirs because you'll be actually collecting your own water supply. And this was raised at Smart Group the other day about um, Tanga the Whenua's concerns about the limitations of water. Well, water is plentiful in this district. It falls for the rate of 1.6 metres a year in Te Puna and 1.2 in Tauranga. Ample water for people to have unfluoridated water supply if they so choose. Okay, so we've got a few more. And we've um, accommodated you quite a bit. What do you want? Have you got a question you want to speak? Well, I'm just saying... In the, in the Western Bay, we don't have that luxury of being able to do that if we want to be careful about what we drink and what's in the water because around me I've got three avocado orchards, two kiwi fruit orchards that are constantly sending me messages about the stuff that they're putting into the air on a regular basis when it's time to be spraying those orchards. That's so the water I thought I was going to get from the council was going to be the stuff that I could drink. To be very careful about that, and I wouldn't want to go off track. But just because you get a notification that they're spraying doesn't mean there's anything landing on your roof. Um, can I get to Mr. Chairman, of can I, point of order, Mr. Chairman? Um, can I ask Councillor Cox to, to repeat her her resolution, please? And also, and perhaps just ask ask the question of of her, um, as in what what does she envisage or what? process is if if the ministry come back and, and say no because i i don't have a, you know keep having votes on this every you know every couple of weeks or whatever so um perhaps you can repeat your, your motion first please so um the option i'm proposing is that the western bay of plenty district council seeks an exemption from the requirements to add fluoride to the f3 and fada fada drinking water supply and prepares a submission to the ministry of health as such um, I guess should that be declined, well, that, that's it then really, isn't it? Or could we, I don't know, maybe we could go back again. I'm not sure. My question is that if, the, um, if, if that is declined, then we haven't actually answered that point, option one or two. So I'm just wondering if we need a, well, a, an option one or two that backs up your, your request. So... So why would we decide that now? So, so from a staff perspective, because we're putting budgets into the annual plan to either plan for delivery, we either need to know, is the budget going in, is the budget not? So it would be option one or option two with your amendment to that option would so be my, probably a, a better, better solution for this. So if my amendments accept, well, it gets voted, then um, basically you're saying what we should do now is follow it up with another one, either one or two. Well, yeah, I guess. I have a question over here, all right? That's what we're working on right at this moment, Councillor. So I, I, would I, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't exhaust all the people who wanted to speak before, Mr. Wickers, Councillor Wickers. Yeah, so I, I oppose the fluoridation on the. On, on principle and that um, it just overrides informed consent that it's a medication that gets delivered to people when they uh, have to take it. And, um, it, you know, it's in the uh, the Bill of Rights to decline any medical treatment. Um, so on that principle, I, I can't support us uh, delivering medication to people that they have it's coming in their water. They, they would then have to go and buy bottled water if they didn't want to, to, to um, take it. Thank you for that. Um, Alan would have been wanting to say something too. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I also look at this and think um, I'm totally opposed to mass medication now. We, we have it at least in two cases at present. We have folic acid now in all our bread and, and flour, et cetera. Um, and then in salt, we have iodine. You know, and that's at least two. Okay, people can say, um, you know, not a problem. Well, frankly, I do know of people that have a problem with folic acid, for instance. I, th I just solidly believe that it is something, as a, as a youngster, I remember my mother supplying me with fluoride tablets. In other words, yes, you can manage it yourself. They could do better and probably even over a reasonable period make a far better job of this, let alone the fact that I guess I'd hate to get into it, but uh, sugar and all the other aspects that come into this, this whole thing about tooth decay, um, which we're not discussing. So to me, sir, um, I'm prepared to very much back the motion put before us, but if, if um, the councillors wish to withdraw it and go to two, option two, I'm all very much still in favour of that. Okay, Councillor Joyce, and then I'm gonna ask, uh, come to Mr. Ellis, if I could please, and ask you to comment after that on the process of we were up to and the requirements in terms of the government request that we proceed with this, but we'll go to Rodney first. Yeah, I mean, you, you, might, you might be able to answer one of my questions, the 57,500 or whatever it is in there. Yeah, you know, what happens if we don't, if we take this path, which I'm comfortable with, um, then do, where does that leave us? Because presumably we're doing that work because we need to get it done to meet the deadline. So i will be interested to know what, what, you know, what that work was for and, and what the funding is. I still have a concern that, you know, I've been, there's a lot of people campaigning on this, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong. There was a little bit of misinformation. I was told yesterday that uh, you know, it's, not, it's not recommended for children under six to have fluoridated toothpaste. Well, certainly my under six-year-old has been recommended to have fluoridated toothpaste. So, you know, there's a lot of information. So what do I do as an ex-journo when I get confronted by uh, alternative information? Um, I go to some, what I hope to be, um, hope to be reasonably independent sources. Um, there is certainly an issue in certain parts of the world, uh, according to the WHO, where there's too much uh, fluoride already in the water, which is why I'd like to know what the natural occurring level is here, not in Wellington, because Wellington is really not relevant. Um, it's a different water source. Uh, and also, you know, um, Harvard Public Health magazine, which, you know, Harvard University is reasonably, you know, well respected. Um, countries that do not fluoridate their water have also seen big drops in the rates of cavities. I'm not, a, I'm not going to pretend to be a dentist or an expert, but there are serious studies being done that are coming down on both sides. And it's really, really hard because we're not in a position to judge this, but it's not just us. I mean, go through Europe. There's a big block of countries from the Nordics right through to Italy, all through Germany and that, that do not fluoridate their water. These are seriously big and well-organized countries. So, you know, I do think we need to push back and say, guys, you've got to give us more justification than just you know what you've got to say so far. What we've heard, and I'm not getting at Gary, because yeah, you know, um, is that well, the health department yeah you know, must be checking these things. Well, actually, no, we need to push back and say, well, what are what is your evidence? And I do think we need to know what the natural level is, because it may, may find we're already doing 1.5 parts per million without even doing anything. So you've already heard that the requirement is that it's kept within a band, is the as but some, some natural is, sources are actually above that band already. Yeah, well, I'm sure council will be doing that work. Before we should do it before we spend any money. All right, well, I'm going to ask Mr. Ellis to give a bit of an explanation before we so you have a, uh, a voting from an informed position. Yep. Um, probably just in terms of the process, so we've applied to the Ministry for Funding for the two plants that they've required us to put fluoride into. Um, they're now considering, and we haven't had a decision yet, that the additional two plants in that Western Supply Zone gets fluoride as well. So we're waiting for a decision on that. Um, the current, the, the first two plants require it to be in place by mid-2025. And our strategy was, um, as we've explained previously, is that we would be putting the contract in place um, April, May, June next year. So, and then the 
fiscal works would happen in uh, 24, 25 financial year to meet that deadline. So a year to put it in place needs a contract in place May next year. If the additional two plants are required to be fluoride as well, then it's likely the um, implementation deadline will be pushed out a year. So out to 2026, because um, physically and with the resourcing, it's probably only two plants a year that would be getting upgraded because there's other upgrades that happen at the same time to future proof the plants. So that would be the timing. So if you were to seek um, an exemption from the ministry, then you've actually got time now to do that, but we would continue working towards that time frame to be able to meet it. Um, and one thing perhaps as part of a second that exemption, we could uh, see if we can have the ministry come and present to the council um, on the on the topic. And so um, if this if this motion before us was to succeed, uh, did, would that mean that council would then withdraw its application for the funding and but either way, it would have no impact on rates for this current year um, in terms of our annual plan discussion today. It, it, won't, it won't have any impact on rates for the next year, irrespective of which decision you make. Yeah. Um, would we withdraw the application? Probably not. I'd probably go, we need to continue with the application because it's a one-off chance to get the funding towards the implementation as opposed to it being rate funded because there's no guarantee that future plants will be funded from the ministry. Um, so it might be that a resolution is something along the lines of that um, you, you, you do the objection and just seek the ministry to come in and speak. Um, but in parallel, we continue with preparation. preparation. Subsequently, depending on the um, response from the ministry, you can make a subsequent decision to stop the process. <coughs> Thank you for that. So we've got a couple more questions. Are they over here? Anne? Yeah. Just based on the information that you, you what you've just explained, Gary, and um, I'm just wondering if we, uh, and bearing in mind if you did look, to, had the other two plants with fluoridisation, and I realise that this um, option, has, issues and options has come up from a submission that's come through the annual plan, but across the wider community, seeing that we then, if, if, if we went with one, two would be done and then another two would be done and, and it would appear that we had consulted on the first two, but we're not consulting on the other two. So in bearing in mind that if, if people can see what I'm talking about, I think it's better that we do wait and go with this mo the motion to actually take our time and wait and see what we get back from the ministry. So I've got uh, Murray and then Don, and then I'm looking to uh, uh, the motion and see what yes, we get. Three, Mr. Um, I thought I heard you say just now, Gary, that neither option has an impact on our rates, but it's got 57. Yeah. So, so that... That is for implement, starting to implement the contract, so getting the contract ready for tender. Um, but if we don't do the contract, that will just change the debt balance in the water supply account by 57,000. It's not going to materially affect the rates. Um, I think if you're thinking from a rates perspective, withdrawing the application for subsidy is a bigger risk for your funding than the 57,000. Council Thrakes. Gary, Gary um, I've got the Tauranga City um, website in front of me and that fluoridation of Tauranga water supply must be implemented by July 2024. So the answer is this good stuff will be available in 13 months for us to drink. That's great. Can we bring containers to take home? And um, <laughs> and is that actually going to go to all three plants? So 140,000 people in Tauranga City are going to be drinking fluoridated water? If that's oh, what the requirement is, then... Maybe I'll have to move to Bethlehem. That's or... what will be happening. Yep. Okay. And... Can I stay a councillor if I live in Bethlehem? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've given this a good thrashing. 
Um, and you've, you've heard all the points. You need to be very careful, I think, how you vote here, that um, you're voting in terms of the process and the annual plan and not your personal views about fluoridation or otherwise. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're coming to that. It's, it's not an option three. It's the motion that is before us. Which is essentially is an option three. But so could we have that repeated, please, before oh. okay, so we it reads as <coughs> as of now that Western Bay of Plenty District Council seeks an exemption from the requirements to add fluoride to the Athenry and Forafora drinking water supply and share and prepares a submission to the Ministry of Health as such. That the Ministry of Health be invited to speak to Council regarding requirements to add fluorine to drinking water, and that Council progress the water fluoridation process with the Ministry of Health. Funding, yeah. Well, that's the, the 57,000. Well, well, the funding application for the, that's the bit you're referring to. We have those words added there, because we're not pursuing fluoridation, we're pursuing the funding application. Yeah. Cool. Right? Mm. Yes, I, okay, thank okay. you. Okay, can I ask you questions? You can before I thought, no. but just for the sake of staff, if this goes through, what will be the process to prepare that submission? Will we workshop it, or how will we do that? Because it's not fair on the staff to, to make them um, do this. Good point, thank you. Um, um, with regards to that, I don't know what the process is, so we'll have to talk to Ministry of Health and work that out, and then we'll come back to you if the time frames align. Otherwise, we'll have, we'll sort something out. Councillor Sol, sir. So, yeah, so, if this motion proceeds and goes through and is accepted there, and the um, Department of Health or whatever their flaming name is these days, um, decides that uh, there's no process to actually um, be able to apply to withdraw. Where do we sit with this within our annual plan? Exactly. Because is it going to be, is it then going to by default revert back to option one? Yeah, it, well, council, uh, Mr. Ellis pointed out that council, their intent would be to still apply for the funding. Sure. But nothing's going to happen till, when did you say, March, April? Yep. And so we'll manage that process depending on how the situation unfolds between that now and then. So we can have another bite at the chair. If we, if we need to. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please, please say aye. 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 Against? No. no. So I think we probably should ask for a show of hands again. Division. 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 Okay. Those who supported the motion, please raise your hands. Yeah, thank you. That was good. Is your hand up? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Grant, is your hand up? Yeah. Please clearly put your hand up. Yeah. Look, ten are up and two are down, okay? Do you want yeah. to cut through the chase? It's pretty, pretty simple. Two, All right. Two. Two. two what brothers. about us now? Rodney got it voted for. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you, John. Are you now? No, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm just going to right. to get this good water. So, your the disadvantages are listed there as well. Move it to town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got that one behind us. We move to community projects. Please, could we focus on the job at hand? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can speak to this one. I'm, I'm not um, proposing to traverse the, the detail that's included in the issues and options paper. Um, I'm sure you've had the opportunity to consider it. Um, this is the option. Broadly, it relates to um, requests for um, projects 
um, within our suite or, or group of um, community building um, as an activity. Um, and most notably, you've got the community board, much of the community board's um, submissions are included within this particular issues and options paper. Um, so council are invited to consider option one that's on the screen. Thank you. Councillor Murray, oh, sorry, Councillor Granger, I'd seen earlier, he's first. Is it boys before girls? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, first. First, right hands, first hand I saw. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so, you my right to. <laughs> Staff have produced a very comprehensive set of responses to the submissions that have been received, and I suggest that we accept them and go with them. Thank you. Councillor Murray Ming. I'm happy to second it. All righty. Don't see a lot of questions. I'll put the motion then. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Sorry. Okay. Elder Housing. Rachel. Um, again, Mr. Margaret. Chair, um, oh, sorry. this issues and options paper um, reflects um, some varied submissions that we received on the on the broad topic of elder housing. Um, <coughs> I'm not um, proposing to go through that in any great detail, other than to say that option one is here for you to consider. All right, I'll put the motion. Oh, sorry. I better not get ahead of myself, had I? Do we have someone who wants to move? <laughs> Councillor Henry, Councillor Joyce. All those in favour? Sorry, we do have a speaker there. I'd like to speak for this. Um, I think uh, we've done a lot of work with Elder Housing, um, Section 17, um, and the only sensible cause is is, is option one. I do want to just publicly acknowledge though the, the comments made by um, Member Guptill this morning around the Y Beach Elder Housing Unit. And I think we may just want to consider the future of those through our LTP process um, and, and how, how we deal with those, whether it's moving, renovation, uplifting, whatever it might be. But um, I think that's for the future, um, but for now, Option one, thank you. Councillor Joyce. Um, this topic seems to generate more heat than light from some members of our community. I'd just like to point out that the idea that these little one bedroom relocatable homes are worth $200,000 is a laughable number. Um, and I think I, would, you know, I welcome uh, constructive criticism. You know, if, if we do something wrong, we don't always get it right. But you know, all, they, all of that submitter had to do was Google, right? You know, three bedroom family home, one piece shift, $100,000. You know, if you're gonna put submissions in people, do your homework because $200,000 is a silly number. And um, yeah, uh, if we're gonna get public submissions and I realize public can say what they like, let's people do some research because that's really, really not helpful. And it's, it just makes the submit a little bit silly. Thank you, Councillor Henry. Um, so in terms of the elder housing, when we first looked at this um, back in the last triennium, we made a commitment to, uh, we, talk, we talked around whether we went out to a housing provider, but our decision was to actually grow and um, grow the stock and make sure that it was that it's something that we could be proud of and we'd be happy for our grandparents or parents to move into them. And that's what we're doing. And, and this is just accelerate the events of 20, um, the 29th of May really just accelerated the area of Waihi Beach um, and brought that to the fore. And I'm happy that um, the community board are actually taking a lead on that and bringing that to our attention. And it's something that we can work through over the next wee while of looking at options for the beach. 
But um, this was the commitment that we made last triennium, and I think that we're making really good roads into doing that in Karikati, and I'd like to see it in Tupuki and other areas of the district as well. Um, in terms of um, the um, Te Riru Te Kahia and the old um, units or homes from the here in Crescent is that as far as I understand it, there has been no other interest other than to River here for those units and, that, and that's in negotiation. And in terms of the valuation, I tend to be in the same camp with um, Councillor Joyce that I don't think that's a realistic option or whatever of, of, the, of the valuation of those. And um, Yes, Tereo Takahia may need some support with funding if they if that is an option that they want to go with to move that onto the the um, onto the MRI or wherever they decide they're going to move. And that is something that council do for many, many other organizations within our community, and that's offer seed funding to help them achieve something that's a desirable outcome for them. And I see that as no different to anything else. Thank you, Councillor Sol. So more of a, I, perhaps I've heard it wrongly, but I think the comment was on the, the um, presentation made earlier today by board member Guptal and, and what she put forward as, as a price for some properties. Yeah. And if, it, if that was the case, uh, um, she also, and, and we were very aware of cheaper options, um, it was used to, to give a bit more of a broad spread um, of, of pricing, so to speak, but also it was using local supplier as opposed to yeah. perhaps some from out in the Waikato or, or whatever. So that's all, just a clarification. Thank you for that clarification. So just coming back to the point at hand, you wish to speak to Councillor Murray Benge? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, I support option one, but I, I do note that uh, we have had serious uh, policy decisions relating to making sure that it doesn't become a uh, cost on the ratepayers. That's fundamental because our people in our uh, units cannot get the same subsidy from government as they would if it was a charity or a trust running the organisation. And I was really impressed that uh, Waihi Beach are looking and talking to the RSA as to an alternative. I'd also like to comment on the, um, the kauri trees that came from here in Crescent. Ray Cobb actually prepared that timber for the Morai for nothing, and that was community working for community. And I agree that uh, around the Tanners Point, they've looked at those houses and said they require so much work to be done on them, and where does the funding come from? So it's a bit of a a, um, oh, a what's it called a poison chalice to be offering them to them actually sir so but we have to stay within policy and I'm looking forward to the plan coming back to us uh, I didn't support the bigger units being done because I thought the basic ones were really the fundamental need for the community and the more of those that we can get uh, within the budget the better it will be for people who need accommodation so I support option one, uh, along with the comments I've made. Thank you. Did I, no, I think I've taken all the speakers, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Other topics? Uh, this is considered the IOP. So the IOP at page 106 of the agenda uh, is a bit of a catch-all issues and options paper that deals with a number of submissions that we received that are more appropriately dealt with through other um, processes, including the uh, long-term plan or through uh, waste minimisation and management plans, um, et cetera. I won't go through, obviously, all 11 um, options, but they are to provide our submitters with a response. Thank you, Rebecca. You're wishing to move, Councillor Granger? Yes, I'll repeat my earlier comments. Staff has done a wonderful job summarising the wall and preparing responses. Thank you. 
I'll second that then. Don't see any other hands. So, um, oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I just wonder if the move and second would like to make a, a small um, addition to point 10 of option one um, that adds that um, or acknowledges that a drop in session on, on Two Mile Creek has been organized for the 19th of June. Okay, I'm sure that can be accommodated. Councillor Murray Benz, you wish to speak. I noted, sir, that um, the CCTV cameras are, are being raised again and that we're obviously going to go into that process um, and I look forward to it. But overall, uh, I think that what we've got here is one that we can all support. Councillor Henry. Um, I totally agree with, with what um, Counts, uh, Mayor Denya has said, <laughs> um, uh, just to make sure that that word acknowledged when, whenever this is printed anywhere is actually not there, that it's at two mile submission points are um, yeah, accepted or something and will be further explored through the da, da, da consultation at, on the 19th of all right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. So, capital programme. Mr Ellis, this you? Uh, yes, probably, I mean, we've, we've looked at the projects before, but given the comments earlier into in today's meeting, uh, you may want to um, add a clause to the resolution that asked for priority to be given to implementing Waihe Beach stormwater projects. Councillor Joyce. I'd agree with that. And I don't know, because I haven't seen the circular that's gone out to the public, um, number one road as well. Yeah, I think those are the two burning issues in the, in the district with regard so, to projects. So, so you're happy to move this with the addition of um, Mr. Ellis's comment? And number one road as well. Okay, okay so moved, uh, Joyce seconded us all. You wish to speak, yeah. Councillor Daly? Oh, okay, we'll take a question still, yep. Uh, you, Gary, a lot of your comment um, should we be also re-looking at 226358 project um, because we've pulled nearly 800,000 out of that um, stormwater project for Waihe Beach? Which, which numbers were those again? Oh. Yeah, so that, that requires um, consenting and land purchase. So it's been difficult to implement in the one year. So at the moment, I've, been, I've asked my staff how we can accelerate the projects. I think I'd rather take a general direction to give priority to those projects and then we figure out how to I just need a bit of time to figure out how we're going to do that. Um, as I've said before, we've got the ability to um, bring the funding forward if we can achieve things faster. Just a further one, I, I see Ohini Angahanga stream in Tapuki has also had its budget um, reduced due to resourcing, but um, just like to note that that is, has been an ongoing issue for the people in Tapuki. Um, yes, yeah, so the Anahinanga Stream project related to um, an investigation to put in almost like a debris capture structure upstream of the culverts. Um, and it's probably, go, we're just reviewing that to see whether that's still going to be effective or not. In, in light of that, I mean, that does make a lot of sense because it's probably debris that's 
washed out our bridges and caused considerable capital expenditure as a result of that. And, and we do know that the Tapuki Highway nearly got taken out by debris um, in that, those January events. But um, um, yeah, I think, I think we have to review that, um, Grant. I think also when you talk about the Tapuki Highway nearly being taken out, you've all seen the pictures of the log that ended up underneath the railway bridge. I'm not sure any debris fence would have stopped that. Just also comment, um, we have officially moved into El Nino, so hopefully the next three years or two or three years should be not as catastrophic as the last three. Well, I'm glad you qualified it. Because not, a, not all of us like dry years. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Granger. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to speak in support. These um, adjustments reflect reality from the team and they're the experts in delivering these projects and so we accept what they say. Thank you. Councillor Murray Benge. I'm certainly in favour of option one and I assume that anything further that we bring forward, uh, Gary, will be in addition to this. Um, Yes, if we bring projects forward, it'll be in addition in terms of the total amount of works, but it will be projects that exist within the long term plan. Well, I was meaning the damage that's been done, that's included. Uh, the, the roading damage is separate. So, re reinstatement of the, the $20 million worth of roading damage is separate to this. Sir, I support it. Thank you. Councillor Joyce? Just wanted to speak. I mean, I mean, there's obviously a great deal of feeling in Waihe Beach, and not without reason. Um, and Ross and Heather have spoken to that this morning. I think there's a lot more to do. And I don't want to think that just because we'll put this extra line in there that we're kissing it off, right? We are, I think, collectively taking this very seriously. We don't have all the answers today. Um, so putting that line in that we're going to prioritise Waihe Beach stormwater actually means something. It's not just a line. So, and um, I think, you know, we just need to get that message out to the community as well. You know, the status quo is not acceptable. I think we all know that. And this is just you know, a step towards hurrying up the process of fixing it. And in some cases, those have been holding up the process. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Just pause and for your information, I omitted a comment earlier in relation to the um, how elder housing. If you're looking um, at your um, stellar document, there is an, a zero missing in the, um, in the project number there. And the cor correct information was on the screen. So that's just for your information. So moving down to Rangiuru business part. You have a question, Councillor Rubin? No. Oh, sorry, you, you're wanting to move. I'd like to move it and speak to it. All right. You're moving option one? Yes, sir. Thank you. And two. Yeah. Got to find the page I got behind there, you see. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. So do we have a seconder? Oh, we better roll back. Um, yep. A question. So, and I know I'm reasonably fresh off the off the boat. Um, so I'm not allowed to say I'm a newbie anymore. The... Um, what happens if this thing doesn't sell? You know, does it all come back? Does that all come back on the right pay? Mm -mm. Rangiri Business Park is owned by Keyside Holdings, which is a subsidiary of Regional Council. And so, in some measure, you could argue that. Um, what if it doesn't sell? Well, we've heard, I'm just going to say thousands, that's probably the wrong word, of assurances from keyside people that it, it's going to fly and if you see the the action that's happening there um there's a good chance you'd have to assume that it will so mr Ellis, sorry yeah, can i just ask related to that because I, I thought keyside owned about a third of it not the whole thing well that's they don't own all the zoned land that's correct yeah mr ellis did you want to add any more 
uh, probably just to say that the investment that has been made there, um, there's a lot of interest in yeah. um, companies to purchase, to buy into it. Um, but that's a commercial arrangement for, for Keyside. Um, in terms of the two resolutions, one and two, um, one is the structure plan schedule that's been agreed with um, the business park and that's required for anyone else coming in uh, to the, the park or buying the land there. And secondly, is about um, considering acting as financier with conditions around it and that's just to consider. It just needs um, us to look at that and understand how that works in terms of the three waters uh, transfer uh, plus the um, the whole debt balance for the council. Okay, so I'll council. I'd quite like to speak to the yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're just coming there. So you moved it, and the mayor seconded uh, options one and two. So yes, if, pardon me. If, or did you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Um, so just on the funding side of things, um, so what security do we would we normally take in these situations? Uh, so our security is essentially through the financial contribution model, which gets repaid, the, the, the debt gets repaid when the land is developed. So it's like a charge over the... It's process. essentially a charge over the land that comes through the resource consent right. process. Thank you. Right. Margaret, your opportunity so to speak. So as you know... Oh. No, I'm just the governor. Oh. I've moved it, so this yeah, is my right of reply. Well, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Started, yeah. Started, yeah. okay, so I get so, two bites. Yes. So I <laughs> the lovely thing is about this is that it's progress and suggesting progress. Now this Rangiuru, it is long overdue. And when we had the Tauranga negotiated with Tauranga to take a slice of our district, the agreement was, and we didn't have it in writing, that and we should have is that they would then support us on Rangiuru. Well, they didn't. And so Rangiuru, <coughs> in my view, has been far too slow. And instead of Tauriko exploding over into Belt Road and Winston's going there, it should have been in Rangiuru. And the traffic problems that we're going to have because of this lack of support for this development, um, I agree, sir, that Keyside Holdings, that's the regional council, but we could have done with Tauranga City support right from the start, and we never got it from them. So I'm just delighted that we're starting to make some decent progress. As well as that, the likes of Councillor uh, Daly has been on the subcommittee working over the sewerage scheme that will link in and to service both areas. So I think we're making reasonable progress. I just wish we had been uh, foot on the accelerator faster, but you can only move as fast as Keyside would do it. Thank and you. the fact that they're there, I think, is a good thing. Thank you. Councillor Thwaites. Yeah, I fully agree with this. I think it's um, long overdue to sit around the table here with generations and generations of councillors wanting to see it happen. So this is um, good. I certainly agree with Councillor Maori Benj about Keyside now uh, activating it. So we should support them. It's no different to the Amokara sewerage pipeline. Councillor Sol. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I basically agree with this also. And I feel sort of a little bit happier because one of my things is that we've got to be a little bit easier to do business with. Mm. Um, and it's finding a way. How, how it pans out, I guess, is one of those things. But to be honest, um, being easier to do business with will make a big difference for this district. Thank you. Councillor Henry. Um, I'm sure this is right, but... Um, Keyside um, properties are a third holder of the, the land, and the rest of it is by West, held by Western Council. No, 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 private landowners. Private landowners. Okay. So, oh, so we we are being the financer of that because we stand to. Our benefit is because we were, um, will see the financial contribution. Is that correct? Uh, it's probably a mixture of what Council Sol said in terms of supporting business and the development, and the council has been an advocate for the business park for the last 20 years. 
Yeah. Essentially, what happens is that um, you need core infrastructure built for the development to commence, the interchange, the wastewater connections, the water, all those sort of things. Um, the amount that needs to be spent to get the development going is more than the Keyside share. Mm. So Keyside have 40% of the park, but it might need 60% of that core infrastructure expenditure up front. Mm. And so what we're talking about is essentially financing some of that difference. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. It's and I understand that it's it's not you know it's not fair that they carry the whole lot. So the, what I'm just thinking about the story around this is that it, it's 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 for our benefit if we actually do do this for them and enable them to get on and do the work and because we are going to reap the benefit in a, sh in a short amount of time than if we didn't do anything. So so the development of the, the Rangiri Business Park is consistent with the um, Smart Growth Strategy. It's consistent with um, your views on economic development, so economic development, um, employment um, in the in the district, the live work play model that says there's employment there for the community, the pocket community of that area, in particular, um, it supports a future rating base or rating increase in rating for the council. Uh, so th there will be benefit coming in that way. There's costs that come in with it. So there's a whole range of reasons that you support the park. That's, that's all I wanted to hear. And, and that's what I believe that we when we're talking about this, that that story needs to be told because it's a good story and we are, our ratepayers are going to be benefiting from it. Thank you. Mayor Daniel. Much has already been said, but I just fully support this. And the uh, uh, it's all part of the tremendous uh, development opportunities out east. So. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Councillor Joyce. Yeah, I mean, look, this is, this is definitely a good project. There's no doubt about it. Well, yeah, I just think my concern, you know, wearing my pessimist hat, is that if it doesn't, if something goes wrong, if, it, you know, if they're not quite as bullish, you know, they're all their bullish talk and there's a lot of bullish talk, it doesn't pan out. You know, having the FinCos as our only security is not great security, to be honest, because it only happens if it sells well. So our security, which is what you know, which you rely on when things go wrong, is based on its success. I mean, do we not have any claim on the assets or anything? I mean, you know, do we not have some security in place for when we when we advance these sums? That's beyond that we hope to get FinCos. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm fully in favor of this project, but you know. Everybody seems to be talking about the blue sky and wonderful things. No one's talking about what happens if there's a storm. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ellis. I'd probably just say it's putting it on the same footing as every other development we've got in the district. So it's exactly the same as urban development in Omokara. If it goes ahead, we recover the cost of the infrastructure from the financial contributions. If it doesn't, we hold the debt until at such a point it does. And we were in exactly that position at the GFC. Uh, which is why the council made the decision not to charge interest direct for a four-year period. Um, it's about supporting that development to get it happening because remembering, as I said before, you also get the other benefits of the increased population, the economic development, blah, 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 all those sort of things. So we don't have any, any security over the assets of the property owners or anything like that if it goes wrong? No, no. The tragedy to me is that, like you said, concern about things go up and down in cycles and then the GFC key side backed off and then by the time they wind up when things get going again here they are nearly ready to go and we're probably facing the next downturn so the timing's less than ideal whereas if they'd kept the foot down as Councillor Murray Bench said we'd be in a much better position now do you want to Make another comment, Council Thwaites. I was only going to add to Councillor Joyce's concerns that if FinCo models or development contribution models work properly, the interest is um, charged at and recovered as well. So there, that's the security of it. We've had the Mokara pipeline for 18 years. It's exactly the same scenario as this. Yeah, last last comment before I put the motion, uh, Councillor Daly. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted a clarification. Um, on option two, the, the bullet point subject to confirmation from DIA that the debt will transfer to enter the BOP. I, I'm just, I hope I haven't um, asked a dumb question, but if um, if we put that subject line in there, does that upset the 
proposal? Um, I think one of the things we've looked at is is that with the council's overall debt position and the, the quantum that's sitting with the three waters, um, 87 million was the figure that we've that's been agreed with the DIA, this changes that figure. So um, it, because the three waters debt would transfer with the three waters entity. So it has to be in that, it has to go with it. Um, if, sorry, because if we incurred that debt and um, it didn't transfer, we don't have any ability to charge and recover it because we cannot charge financial contributions for three waters once the once um, our responsibility finishes and transfers to the new entity. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, so if national wins the election and and um, the debt won't transfer to entity BOP, then um, well, you're making assumptions. <coughs> no, no. Yeah. So, so part of the modelling the. Sorry, part of the modelling that has to go into this is um, Adele's team are doing the overall debt modelling over the next 20 years. So you then go, if this occurs, what does that do? And what are the scenarios, for example, if growth slows down, where do we sit with our, our debt headroom, et cetera? So all that has to be taken into account, which is why this is a um, put in the form of council considers it. We just need to, there's quite a bit more work to be done to work out the implications. Okay, I'm going to put the motion. Well, oh, sorry, Mr. Holio. I just wanted to round out. I think um, um, Grant's question. Grant, if we if we transfer the debt to um, DIA, obviously then they recover it through um, contributions. If it doesn't get transferred to DIA because National get in or the, anything changes, then we hold the debt, but we will recover yeah. from the contribution. So we're still net zero. It's just it's just about protecting ourselves that yep. if it goes ahead as proposed, if three waters goes in. All right. Yes, I, I think this is one time when uh, you look forward to the future and you cannot hold back and think, well, what if the economy turns up or down? But we know that this is a growth area. We know that industrial land is needed. We know that one of the weaknesses of Western Bay is that we don't have a great deal of industrial land. And this has been waiting for over 20 years to get this up and running. So, sir, we can't, I keep, when they come in to see us, why can't you work faster? And I keep saying that uh, we just need to do so. So I think this is absolutely great news for the Western Bay. We've got nothing to lose from it long term. We've got the Eastern Arterial. It's all there waiting to just tick the box. Thank you. All right. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motions, I suppose I should say. All those um, in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carry. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll thought I'd heard you use 144 before. <laughs> All right, well, just if we could just settle down, I think it'd be appropriate if we could do one more before we break for lunch. So, if we can just deal with Cutty Cutty Industrial Park, exactly the same principle as the previous one. Um, Councillor Henry, and it's seconded Councillor Granger. Is that correct? Yes, sir, because um, we've just Canvas all the arguments for yeah, same. in the previous one, and they apply yes. exactly in the upper, totally in the northern end of the district as they do in the eastern. So uh, let's yes. do it. Thank you, Councillor Coxie. Did you? Uh, yeah. All right. Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, you wish to speak, Mr. Thwaites. I mean, I just wonder what this covers. Um, are you talking about all the roading, all the um, every? contribution made, not just waters. Um, the other one was more specific to wastewater at Kipuki. This is, in general, the whole thing. And who is paying for what uh, under any such change? Because it exists already. It, it, Gary? Yeah, it exists already with a developer-funded model. And because yeah. you've got multiple landowners, you end up with that same overhang in terms of um, the infrastructure to get it going costing more than that developer's share. So essentially we pick up the bit in the middle. So they would have to pay their financial contributions and there might be a gap 
in terms of that core infrastructure and we pick that up until we recover it from future financial contributions. That the scale here is probably one tenth maybe of Rangiru. Yeah, and, and my confidence in these landowners is about one tenth of, of Keyside. So I guess that balance off it can change. Well, they could have done something in the last 20 years. The plan is there. Why aren't they doing it? <laughs> well, you're wanting to speak anyway, so you better jump in now. So let's let's run through a few of things. First of all, it's 42 hectares, just over half of it is somebody who doesn't want to be involved, right? And that this current structure plan has a Ready, great big roundabout going to that piece of land, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He wants to keep on farming until he dies. So he's not interested. The other guys have been itching to get ahead. One of them, in ways that's probably quite annoying to council, he's been, you know, trying to do a few things that he probably shouldn't have been doing. He wants to go the, the legitimate route. Um, we've just had Wakakata put a nice roundabout in at Tetley Road, so that that eases a lot of the access concerns, keeps it off us. Um, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why it hasn't gone ahead, but we are where we are. Right. Um, the other thing is because the structure plan, as it currently sits, it involves a lot of investment on land that's not available, you know, the farmer land, um, it's going to have to be reworked and the council staff are on their way through it now. So why has it happened over the last 20 years? Well, because the people who wanted to go ahead had the same problem as Quayside and Rangiru, that they were being asked to fund, you know, they were only maybe a third or a quarter of the land being asked to fund the whole thing. Um, by the way, Keyside is involved, Don, for your information. The landowners have brought in Keyside to advise them because they know they're not developers, right? So there's a lot of work going on in the background. Um, you know, the community board's been involved with John helping facilitate things. The council staff have been involved. Um, there's a lot happening in the background that will hopefully unblock this and bring more employment to Cuddy um, you know, which is, has been pointed out to us in submissions, is rapidly aging and we need you know, we need some more employment out there. So, Don, the things you say are all true historically, but I think we've got an opportunity to move forward in a more positive way now by working with the people who want to go forward and by coming up with a model that doesn't require, you know, 25 or 30% of the land to pay the development costs of the land they don't own up front. Um, I still would like to see some security on any forward funding we can do. I don't know if that kills projects, but, we, you know, whatever's yes. possible. Yeah, it does. Okay, thank you for that explanation. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please. Who's going to pay for all this? Who's paying? That's what's been done. Who's going to pay for this? All right, I've said I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Okay, carried. Do you want your vote recorded, Don? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. We're going to pause there and go and have a lunch break. I think the next um, topic could consume a little while, so I'd hate to keep you from your lunch.
Yes, welcome back. I hope you're well fed and uh, brains all fired up to make big decisions. I wonder, Rebecca, could we, my thoughts where we go and deal with um, 2.1 or two first, yes. So we can, can we start there? Yes, that's fine. Um, uh, yeah. So um, I'll just make a brief comment that um, the chief executive, out of the discussions we had earlier that we workshop, was tasked with trying to find additional savings uh, to <clears throat> limit the or to reduce the extent of the rates increase. And so these were some options that were brought forward. So Adele, are you, Rachel, someone wish to make a brief explanation about these? Um, through, through the chair. So you said these are the options, um, as you just identified that they um, have come back as in addition to the um, savings that have been identified to date. Um, so the number one is around reducing the library book renewal budget um, and that is actually then redirecting it into to the use of the reserve instead of actually having a rates funder contribution. Um, the removal of 104,000 for the business case development for the urban growth um, and then the last one was 54,000 of funding towards smart growth. Now that was in addition to the um, budget that had been provided for the LTP um, and as smart growth hasn't currently set their budgets, um, the recommendation was to remove any additional costs. Costs are variable year on year. So um, there's a for council's consideration. So this is essentially, I guess, <clears throat> New information at this point for councillors. So are there any questions around those? Uh, Councillor Joyce. So on number one, as I understand it, Murray identified that the library book replacement reserve had more money in it than the total cost of replacing all our library books, right? The total valuation of our library books. Um, so this is reducing money going into the fund rather than actually reducing the purchase of books, right? Yeah, so we're still, I mean, just the wording says reduced library book renewals budgets. I mean, it could be read as we're buying less for our libraries, but actually we're not. We're just not continuing to pump money into a fund that already has a lot of money in it, as I understand it. Through the chair, that's correct. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Council Granger. Uh, can we have a bit more information on number two, the urban growth area project? We've I was sort of under the impression that we had done all those business cases and we knew exactly where all the future urban growth areas were going. So why was there money here in the first place? Through you, Mr. Chair, I think the, the descriptor is a little bit um, a little bit oblique. So that actually is to progress the next stage of the strategic business strategic case for Tikainga. Um, we are of the view that we can fund that through an existing budget. <coughs> You have a further question or do you want to move? So, oh, yeah. so, so well, if you want to speak, we'd better get a mover first. Well, yes, <laughs> happy to move it, sir. Yeah, and seconded. So the three together, 2.1. Okay, yes. thank you. Right, Councillor Grange. Well, I, I think that these are eminently sensible tweaks that we can make to reduce our um, 7.4 that we went out with a little bit and to show we have gone back and looked at things um, and uh, so I'm fully supportive of, of 2.1 being added to 1.1. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor murray Bench. Happy to support the recommendation, sir, that's been moved. Councillor Thwaites. I just have one question about the um, smart growth budget and the projects that they've got lined, does this align with what's going? Mayor yeah, James, you might be able to answer it for me. I think I'll defer to staff on this one. Um, yeah. I can, yeah. Um, basically, the, that doesn't affect any of the delivery. So it doesn't affect any of the actual operational work that has been done. This was purely us making a, initially making an allowance above the LTP just for rising costs 
um, that we thought we might um, have to pay. Um, but um, given that they haven't done their budgets yet, I said to them, we well, can't expect any more from us in terms of um, what we're going to contribute above the LTP. All right. Rodney. I mean, no one's going to be surprised that I, my view is that we can go much further. I mean, there's other groups that are also funding above their LTP level that I'd like to see us do the same with. Um, I, I, I support this as a, as a step. I still think, you know, we need a lot more to be done. I mean, you know, I put forward a spreadsheet suggesting a rates increase of 3.53. Not that I expected the council to agree to everything in that, but I just wanted to show what was possible. Um, but this is an important step towards getting the rates under control. All right, I'm going to put the motion then. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carry. So if we take a step back now, as I'm sure I heard someone say, we can add that to <clears throat> option 1.1. And, and or any of those options, I'm guessing, essentially. So um, we've, we've canvassed these options quite thoroughly and how we've arrived. So to test the waters, I'm going to move that we adopt option 1.1 with the addition of those 2.1 that we've just moved. So... We have a seconder from the mayor. So, <clears throat> yes, Councillor Henry. So, adding uh, those three together, bring the rate that we go out. Microphone. So, adding put those two together, that would bring the rate that we would go out to is seven point zero eight. Is that correct? Uh, seven point zero four. Four. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Oh, Grant. Um, just someone done the numbers on the dollar difference between seven point oh four and six point five seven average. Oh, uh, got a so this is the dollar difference in terms of the original options not applying eight point the eight point seven not so 2 .1. without two point one this is uh, the dollar difference as a guide. Thank you. Councillor Joyce. I speak against this. I don't think we're going far enough. Um, it's easy to look at that and say, oh, the numbers are small, but people are hurting. They're looking for a signal from us that we're holding our belts and uh, people's mortgage costs have gone through the roof. I don't want to go over the same ground every time, but it does, people are hurting. And the thing is we say, well, yeah, it's only small. It's only small, but you know, frankly, we could put a dozen of these small things together and actually come up with a much better result. And I think we need to get um, a much better result than this. I realise I don't have the support around the table to do that, um, but I'd like to see us go further than, than simply saying, well, 7% is, is good enough. I think we could do better than that for our ratepayers and our residents who are facing a cost of living crisis. Okay. Councillor Sol. Yes, sir. I support the for, former speaker there. Um, the, the uh, issue really is, I think we, um, we still are asking a lot of people that are going to struggle and we're not assisting them too much at present, but uh, every little bit counts. A little bit that we just had, a little bit more would go a lot further too. Unfortunately, uh, I don't, I also gather probably in the room, there isn't support to do that. So that's where it sits. Right. Uh, we'll go to the mayor. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, option, I favour option 1.1 um, in conjunction with 2.1, which has just passed. It is the prudent thing to do with inflation um, still high 
and LGCI, the, the local government um, index between eight and 12. Um, the feedback from the consult consultation was, was pretty muted, considering this was what we went out with, our, our main item. Um, and in fact, the, the biggest uh, response we had was to, to spend more on the day fueling pools. Um, I view that as a general acceptance of the rate rise and an understanding of the inflation env inflationary environment we're in. Nevertheless, I am pleased that we have been able to, to respond to the requests and, and lower the increase with respect to what we went out with. So we went out with 7.41 and we're, um, well, with this option, we'll end up with 7.04, which, uh, which is a good thing. Um, and this tells our community that we have listened to them. I would warn strongly against going any further. It would be seriously imprudent given the ongoing inflation and the cost of the storm damage still to be factored in. Mm. We've heard, heard this morning about um, uh, costs from that, both from um, well, the Auckland anniversary storms and uh, well, Gabrielle a little bit and, and Waihi Beach. Uh, I don't think it's wise to be cutting that any further right now. That will store up problems and much larger rates rises down the road. I promised that I would make, when I got elected, that I'd make the tough decisions and that we, we would be a council that didn't kick things down the road. And so 1.1 is, is the prudent decision for me. Um, so that's, that's how I'm going to support. And also just, just looking at other neighbouring councils, um, ours are right at the bottom end, all our neighbours. Uh, look at TCDC, 11.6. Matamatapiako 13.8, Rotorua 8.8, Portuguese 14, Hauraki, depends on which number you take, but they're, they're sort of eight or nine. Um, Karo 8.2, Fakatani 6.9. So, you know, we're, we're right at the bottom end, end of that. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm comfortable that this, this is something that the, uh, the community can, can understand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Murray Binge. So, um... I think we all around this table are sitting in a pretty privileged position and haven't got a clue as to how people are really coping out there in the community at the moment. It's uh, This increase is above the inflation rate, and what we're doing is just reinforcing the inflation rate to stay where it is, and we do have a responsibility to bring it down. I had an option there this morning. Um, I disagreed totally with the advice we were given at Morning Tea and because we're here to make decisions and we're here to make the tough decisions. The ones that are before us um, could have gone ahead if we'd made the previous one, but it, we're just making it difficult for people. And so, sir, it's really nice to have all this stuff done, but um, we have to really take a look and see how we can actually carve that that build back to under the 7%. Even 6% is too high. And I agree with uh, Councillor Joyce. He might be a first-term councillor, but he's hearing what the community's saying. And so, sir, I, I uh, feel very uncomfortable with where we're at, and I don't know how I'm going to vote. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Granger was next. We seem to be playing crisscross here, but never mind. <laughs> Thank you, sir. A question for staff through you, sir, if I may. Um, looking at one of the items in 1.2, namely the resource um, management district plan review, 200,000 odd. What are the implications of us, given the fact that we're up in the air so much about what is actually going to happen with our district plan and RMA reforms and all these other things? At the moment, what are the implications of us not spending that out of the um, reserves, but just not spending it? Who wants to answer that one? I'm told Rachel wants to answer. Yeah, I don't think she heard the question. So the question was, um, if you don't spend, in the current budget, you've got $211,000 for the district plan. And um, if you were to remove that, would it be required? Can you um, not spend it? Do I need to go to um, Mr. Ellis while Rachel is collecting her thoughts? Could... Yeah. 
Right, we've moved, <laughs> we're paying past the parcel, Sorry, but we, pass we are getting. Um, I guess just to assure councillors that we still have a relatively significant budget to progress the district plan review without this reduction that's planned. Um, as you recall, the work program prioritises the um, progression of the Tupuki spatial plan and also looking at Papakainga in the current year. We still have sufficient budget on top of those two um, priority projects to progress further engagement around the district plan review, noting the uncertainty of the environment that we're working in at the moment, which requires us to look ahead kind of in tranches of work and um, make the best decision available at the time based on that information in terms of where the reform might be heading. So, so the question is, can we afford to rather than shift that in the books, which has downstream implications, is to just not put it in at all and use that money to drop the answer below 7.04 into something that starts with a six? So, sorry to interrupt. I think what you're proposing is an additional motion to reduce the operational budget budget for the district plan, plan review. And I just, just think we just need to be clear around that's that's not part of the option that's being moved at the moment, but that's an additional movement that you're trying to make as well, just so that everyone's clear on what is being proposed. I, I would move that motion once I got an answer as to what the implications yeah. are. I mean, if it's a well, stupid idea, I'm not going to... Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask... Whoops, throw my pen around. Rachel is going to give us an explanation. Um, so if that was um, a, a motion put and accepted by council, then we would be bringing back to you some decision making around what you're not going to do in that space. Because the practical reality is, is that we have carefully looked at the district plan review budget. It is progressing in this, uh, in the, in this financial year and in the next financial year. It is progressing the costs associated with the Tupuki Spatial Plan, all of which are enormous planning exercises. Um, we would be asking you to make some, some tough calls around what you're not going to do in the resource management space because there would not be enough capacity nor funding to progress everything. Okay, so if you heard that, I think that's where we got the explanation I think you're wanting. So, um, Councillor Thwaites, you're next. Yeah, I, I personally support option 1.1. I believe 7.04 is prudent for our business going forward. I don't know where people on fixed incomes live if they live on lifestyle blocks or urban, but I know the water and the wastewater charges are both significantly less than 7.04. So the urban part of our district, our urban half, will be facing a figure, well, not significantly, a, a number less than 7.04. And I think inflation's running at 7 point something as far as I know. So I believe we're actually... To those people, we're coming in under inflation, which is quite amazing. But anyway, that's semantics, it's numbers. But so like I said, the main point is urban Western Bay of Plenty are not facing a 7.04% increase on their wastewater charge or their water charge. And we know how significant a proportion of the total bill they receive is of those two items. So I believe 7.04 in the current state of affairs is a good result. Thank you. Across to Councillor Henry. Um, I'm, I'm happy that we've decided to look at reducing our rate that we go out to um, community with, but I'm mindful of what I've said before, that if we start to consider any more, what we what we're doing is we're not looking at the long-term view because any implication that what we do now is going, it could have a big implication for years to go. And that's what I, I'd, you know, we don't want to be sitting around this table looking at this all the time because of the decision that we made there is that actually following us along the train and we're always going to be looking at this. Um. Well, I'm happy that yeah. I'm happy that we have looked at making a slight reduction on what we need now to consult on. You know, that is not going to put a hiccups along and we're going to be able to settle with that. And that's the main thing I'm worried about, that we're not making matters worse 
Thank you. Councillor Joyce? Well, you were waving your hand. Um, on the district plan, to follow up on Murray's point, so you've got 211,000 under 1.2 and a further 400,000 under 1.3. Or does that include the 200,000? I'm not quite sure how that works. That includes... So 400,000. So what is what would what would Rachel's team still have to spend? Is that the total budget for the district plan for that year or is it just a chunk of it? It's the total budget, is it? That's the total budget. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Sol. Thank you, sir. I think one of the things, and I, I quite um, understand the concerns about things becoming a bow wake ahead, but I think one of the other things we've got to consider in the end in, in this is our explanation that in the future there is likely to be a more noticeable increase as well because there is a lot of work to come through but just at this moment we're in this crisis with people and it'll at least gives them some time to um, sort their own affairs out etc but in the future i think it's inevitable that there's going to be um, probably a more significant increase than what we're doing today okay thank you all right we'll just round it off before i put the motion um, were you wanting to speak, Councillor Daly? Okay. Well, I'm just going to say that uh, much as I would love to reduce the rates increase further, I am uh, in the camp of those who've accepted that this is a, a reasonable expectation to move at 7.04%. And I'll just remind you all that particularly for those that weren't here that three years ago in the uncertainty of COVID, Council reduced the proposed rates increase from 3.9-ish percent to 1.98. And uh, subsequently, it was a bit of a shock to the, us that the implications the following year when the, and the proposed rate increase from the LP LTP went from about three to I think nine or ten percent, and work had to be then done to bring that back in order. So I'm very conscious and mindful that we don't want to be exacerbating the future situation because no matter what, as as Councillor Sol just pointed out, with the issues that we're facing, we're going to be facing substantial increases in the future. So don't let's make it too hard now. Thank you, Councillor Daly. Yes, I'd reluctantly support this I, I did argue for the going further with the general rates reserve in our earlier discussions however I've, I've taken made it a made a point of trying to understand exactly how everything works and I should know by now being here a few years but the pipeline of work that Gary always talks about has always intrigued me and also the the capex um, capital delivery bow wave also intrigues me. Um, however, I've got my head around the pipeline of work now and, and basically what we're doing with the, our rates is collecting a amount of money that funds our pipeline of work along with the other contributions from the FinCos and, and so forth. And so if you, if you reduce that amount that you collect from rates, by using the general rate reserve, then you've still got to make that money up next year. And um, and I finally realised, you know, that's quite significant because you've basically got to um, get twice the amount that you before going this year. So um, um, and also in view of our performance based rating contract up for renewal, we've already heard we're up for another 50% increase on that. And we've heard of all the issues around the district with all our stormwater roading reconstructions. Number one road, we're struggling to fund that to the level that we want to fund it. Um, and then on top of that, we've got the um, cyclone rehabilitation work. We've got the Waihee Beach flooding. 
And I, I just can't see that next year's long-term plan is going to go very smoothly. It's going to be a bit of a, a bun fight because we still got people in the district wanting the nice to haves, and but we've still got to supply the essentials, the essentials plus really because we've fallen behind. And uh, so I, I've really got to go with what's on the table at the moment, just purely based on that. And next year, through the long-term plan, that's the time when we've really got to squeeze the pipeline and maybe push some of these projects out. Um, but that will require more consultation. So that's really why I've reluctantly ended up at this point, at this time. So I did say it was going to be the last, but I'll let you have a go, yeah. Councillor Cox. Yeah. Not meaning to be rude. Um, so I, I do agree with um, what Councillor Joyce and Councillor, what's your name again, Sol have said. Um, and I do want to thank staff for all the extra work they've done on this and all the hard work and for finding the extra bit as well. But I would still have liked to have seen this come down. I know there's not much appetite for it around here, but, but to the point Margaret made where we might all be in a privileged position for now, um, but people on fixed incomes, going to your point, Don, as well, it, it is, you know, percentages here, percentages there. People are really struggling, and I know it's, it's, it's not going to be the first or the last time, but I do feel like we could have made a little bit more of an inroads and probably gone with option two or three, to be honest, but just my thoughts. Okay, right. I think we've had a good thorough opportunity for everybody, so I'm going to put the motion. Op option one, which the, the difference there is uh, to what's written up there is that it, it added to that is those items that we just approved in 2.1 come off and it brings it. So that's 7.41 is 7.04. All right. So all those in favour, please say aye. Okay. We'll have a division then. Those in favour, raise your hands, please. Yeah. All right, and those against? All right. Okay. So the motion was carried. Thank you. Right. So going to fees and charges. Uh, page 155 of your agenda is the issues and options paper relating to fees and charges, excluding uh, indicative financial contributions. Uh, attachment C contains the draft fees and charges schedule without the financial contributions schedule attached to it. So there are three options today. The first option is that we continue uh, that you propose to adopt the fees and charges as contained in, in attachment C, which is what we consulted on. Uh, the second option is a proposal to uh, reduce a fee, uh, which would require us to amend that fees and charges schedule, uh, or there may be additional changes. So any questions of clarification there? It's understood. Mayor. I was going to um, move option two, if I may. Okay. Seconded. Okay, Councillor Coxie, they seem to be the same time. <laughs> we'll call it a, uh, yeah. All right. Um, sorry, Councillor Murray Benz, you wish well, to. I also raised the issue of uh, um, when we go for official information from council 
there is a charge to be put on it if it's more than half an hour. Totally opposed to that, sir. We have a good rapport with our communities and keeping an open mind and keeping people given support uh, when they need it. Uh, so where you fit that in, I don't know, but I'd like to vote on it. Yeah, well, just point out that um, when you raised this last time, we had a lengthy explanation around it, and I think we we're assured that it's only char there's only ever a fee made, a charge made on one or two occasions a year. Um, sorry, sorry, I was incorrect. There have been two charges made in the last five years. So um, it seems um, a sledgehammer to crack a walnut, I think. It wasn't there before, so why put it in now? For a protection, it, I it assume. Was. It's always been there on top. Yes, and, and that fee has not changed from what was proposed the previous year. So it's the same fee it was last year. As it is currently, there's no increase. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, Councillor Granger. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. I shall not support option two, um, although the number there is small and the number of people who would benefit from it apparently is small from what we're told. I think the bigger issue to consider is the fact that it will set a precedent and we'll be chasing our tail on all sorts of little things like this that pop up each time. Um, so I cannot support number two. Okay. Councillor Joyce. A quick question. I'm, I am actively planning to do this, so do I just recuse myself from this? <laughs> well, I guess that's up to you, but... Um, I recuse myself. Because, I mean, I, because having, active, the fact that consider. you've told us you're planning to do it could would suggest to me that you do have a conflict. Yeah, so okay. you I'm, I'm recusing anything, myself from this discussion. <laughs> this project, man. If you hadn't said anything, we wouldn't have known. So thank you for that. No further discussion. So the mayor had moved to. Did we have a second? And oh, no, trade. Yeah, council. Yeah, yeah. So um, Murray's spoken against it, but I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. I think that was carried. You want your votes recorded? Yeah. Councillor yeah. Joyce did not vote, and Murray, Benj, and Granger voted against. Is that correct? Got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've dealt with that one. And, 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 and so we're over the page. So, so um we're moving to prepare a decision document that's the one where i'm at we... resolution six i'm reminded how far back was that page six six ah. oh page seven actually yeah <laughs> So it's a long way back. Whoops. Happy to move number six, sir. Okay, thank you. I'll just I'll do it this way. Oh. So um Councillor Granger has moved. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Henry. Yes. <laughs> Item six, page seven. We're all clear. So I'll put the motion. All in favour? Against? Carry. Okay, thank you very much for that. So then this takes us to 10.2. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
So you have moved and seconded all of the options, right? Oh, but we, but we have, have to move. move and second the substantive motion that sits above it. So um, that one, that the committee would need to cancel the option. Why well, can't sure it be true? Because it doesn't want to sit alongside each of these options. Grim, back in the olden days, we used them now. Just quiet, I need to concentrate on it. So, here, I show you. So, for example, each option has this four. Okay, and it just sits up today. It's fine. Yeah. That's good. All right. Councillors, we're back on track. So, following on from discussions um, we had recently in regards to the financial con contributions, um, we are here to consider this matter and make a decision again. So, uh, we do have um, Mr. Walter Clark, isn't it? Yes. Um, who is is on Zoom to assist in this discussion? But <laughs> yep, good to see you, Walter. But firstly, Adele, do you want to introduce the topic? Eight thirty-four. And through the chair. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to speak to this report. The purpose of this report is to present the updated financial contributions proposed for 23-24 and supporting information in order, to for, in order to enable further consultation on the proposed amendments. Western Bay of Plenty have used financial contributions since about the year 2000. And there have been 17 financial contribution models that have been used in the background to support that information and to calculate the financial contributions for the district. Prior to the annual plan 23-24, Council was undertaking a review of its financial contributions approach. And the review, review partly the result of the submissions and queries raised in recent years, um, but also through the annual plan 23-24 process, where the submissions were raised in relation to financial contributions. Um, Council have engaged Utility NZ, and we have Walter Clark here online um, as part of that review process. And um, we're considering a two phases to this. The review and the recommendations from Utility NZ has recommended that the financial models um, and oh, the, the, when we looked at them, we recommended that the changes that have been identified from the models um, be going or sent out for further consultation. The issues that had been identified through the process were inflation, rate subsidies, and um, these are the basis for which the models are calculated. Um, this means that the proposed indicative for FCs for 23-24 that were consulted on through the annual plan process have now been updated. So further consultation is recommended as the changes proposed could be considered material um, to those previously consulted on, and we'd like the opportunity to provide for interested or affected parties to present their views on the updated financial contributions. Thanks, Adele. So, Walter, is there anything you wish to say before we uh, open up the floor for questions? Uh, no, I haven't got anything further to add to what Adele's just um, said and what I spoke to you about a couple of weeks ago. So I'm happy to answer any specific questions. Great. Thank you. So, questions, councillors. Councillor Murray Benj. How long ago did we get it wrong, Adele? Um, through the chair, so the models have been running since 2000, um, so what this review has identified, um, you know, there's a variety of reasons for the changes, um, and some of them have obviously occurred as we've updated the models and district plan changes as well, so some of them have occurred for a number of years. Councillor Joyce. Apologies if this is in there, but if you can point me to it. Um, does this change the forecast income from FinCo's for the 2023-24 year? And if so, where does it show that in here, please? Because you do forecast FinCo revenue, right? That's right. Um, through the chair, so in terms of the revenue, um, effectively it's um, how we calculate per lot. Um, that's the current basis for determining financial contributions. Um, so 
we're looking at when they're going to um, be developed um, and, and a lot of that's um, forecasting information and then over what year we're going to achieve that income but it's also then the splits determined between what's rates funded what's financial contribution or any other funding contributing to a project what we've now provided as part of this consultation is what we're calling disclosure tables which is further information upon how that's split what we've actually achieved in income to date and what our forecast future income is by project and that's contained in the consultation document. Can you, so the overall forecast impact on council, that's in here as well? Because you forecast, FinCo's, how much you expect to get each year. And yes. I understand it has, you're expecting a decline next year because the economy is going down. So what, where's that number? Can you just point me to where that number is, please? Or show me later if you like. Um, yeah, it has been infected into our annual plan at the moment um, in terms of the anticipated revenue from financial contributions. It's but, in our, but, in the, our, but does it change it? Does this change that forecast? It, it's about yeah. the spread of the funds. Well, as, you, as you saw. That's the answer is no, it doesn't change the overall forecast. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's it. So the this year or future years, that's correct. As you saw from the information we were given a couple of weeks ago, some will pay more and some will pay less. And and, and we're still in the, in the lap of the gods, shall we say, in terms of how many come oh, forward. Oh, for sure, but we do forecast it. As yeah, part of yeah, certainly. Process. But if it's, if it's neutral to that overall number, that was my question, yeah. Not markedly different, I would suggest. Um, so who did I... I think I had uh, Murray next, did I? Thank you, sir. Um, on page... 856. Um, I have a question. Um, so these are the Margaret Place extension and ODL areas, um, which are separate because everybody knew what the numbers were. Um, and so they have their own particular fin codes because those were non, non summed. What is the effect of, or, or has the MDRS info housing issue been? Factored into any of those, or what would be the effect? Because there's a number of fairly big sections um, there that could be developed now under the new um, rules. So, what have, what have we done about those? Um, so, so the the new rules haven't been factored into this because we you don't know if that's actually going to occur. So, they could still be developed as single lot or single housing unit. Or they could go for the three, the three unit or two units, but at the moment that's calculated based on the original um, anticipated yield for that area for that particular project. Thank you, Councillor Murray Bend. Sir, I appreciate that an awful lot of work has been done by staff on this issue, and I think the sooner we go out uh, for consultation on it, the better. So I'm more than happy to move option one. We'll come to that in a moment. Um, yeah. Count, yeah. Councillor Henry. Um, I, I guess the name of the platform is like the um, table that you use to project out something table. What was that? They're called disclosure tables. They're contained within the consultation document itself. Oh, okay. Um, and I was just going to make the same comment that you did, that um, Chair, that... With the decrease in um, Kitty Kitty to Pukki Makatu Dana and the increase that it probably possibly won't, you know, might even be more, it won't be much of a difference with the difference down and ups in the FinCo's contribution. If everything. The overall difference for Te Pukki, um between what we've charged last financial year and what we're charging, proposing to consult on now is a 16.9% variance. Yeah. reduction yeah well i think what councillor henry That's was the, getting at some over, areas go down and some go up, up. So, and, overall, and so overall it's relatively neutral that's not to acknowledge that some people will be feeling the pain <laughs> okay so we've flushed out all the questions so councillor murray benz you said you wanted to move were you just moving recommendation one or did you want to move the well the whole thing. So you're moving recommendations one, two, three, four, and five as a package? Eight, three, four, Margaret. Okay, so it's been moved. Do we have a seconder? 
Councillor Daly. You wish to speak, Councillor Mary Bench? Thank yes, you. Yes, this is our core business. And if we have made any mistakes in the past, it's really important that we correct them. As I said before, sir, I'm grateful that the staff have done so much homework on this subject. It will be interesting to see what arguments the community comes back with. So I think um, if we were just passing the decision today, that would be quite different, but we're not. And so we're passing it to the community. It's over to them to tell us what they think, but the proof and the background work has been done. So I think um, more than happy to move it. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Thwaites. Yep, I fully support it. Just a few councillors have made comments about the budget and what's gone. We've been through here before. A number far more significant than these movements have been the overall decline in the economic conditions. I've been around here before. We were forecast 200 lots and we've received 50. Currently, we've got 295 in the long-term plan. If things stay as tight as they are, it might only be 50 sections brought forward. So that impact would be far greater than any financial swing on here. So like I said, it's a finger to the ear, but you're virtually looking for a long-term trend. So as far as budgeting, um, FinCo's go, good luck trying to get it dead right. Number of properties, not, not the quantum involved. Okay. Um, yeah, Councillor Daly. Yeah, I would conclude with concur with Don. Um, the the market conditions are going to be the most significant factor going forward. But as we saw, you know, after the GFC, it's good that council has um, recognised the deficiencies in the model and corrected them. Um, and and hopefully our developers will, I'm sure some of our developers will appreciate the effort that's been made, although some obviously won't be so happy. Thank you. Okay, well, just before we, uh, before I put the motion, I'd just comment that uh, I'd like to essentially endorse Councillor Murray Benger's comments and uh, thank the staff for looking into this and bringing this to our attention before um, the charges progressed any further out of line. So I appreciate that. So, Cap Okay, Councillor Murray Bench. Uh, it's been mentioned that we're in heading towards a recession, or we may be, uh, but life goes on anyway. And whether we go in slow down or speed up, uh, you've got to have the rules right. And if we've made the mistakes in the past, it's really fundamental that we correct them. So the fact that we it's suggested that we slow down, I can't agree with that. We've got to get it right. Okay, I'll put the motion then. Um, those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carry. So thank you very much. And thank you, Walter, for your attendance. And um, appreciate that. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'll see you guys on um, Tuesday. Beauty. Bye. Bye. Right, so... I believe that brings us to the end of our business. There is no information for a seat. So we can close our meeting at four minutes to two. Thank you.